All right, tweets have been made. Game has been launched. Mic is operational. Sound gate has been added. So let me. Uh, silent. Don't even hear the click. Unless I talk, then you hear. The oh, I'm gone. I'm back. Hello. So, just a quick thing I'd like to say. Um, so this game does get dark. Um, if excessive violence. Is not for you, and I didn't change the name of the stream. Crud. I'll fix that. But just warning, like some dark stuff does happen in the later chapters. At least they did in the show. I'm not sure how this compares, uh, but just heads up. About that, let me fix the stream name. Gosh dang it! When they cry. Um, would be a good title for this. Power of friendship. Change this part to when they cry. I think I've been saying it to the wrong file. I'm saying it's like the anime actual category rather than the actual game. So. I'm gonna try saying it to the actual game of figure out. See how that goes. Alright. Continue. We're on chapter 9. I think it goes all the way up to chapter 12. But I am not certain. Okay, we finished. Yep, yeah, let me just, Yep, yeah, okay, there we go. I gotta fix that glitch still. I'm not sure what does it though. Here we go. Continue. Tap, tap, tap. The sound of muffled footsteps stopped in front of the door to my room. A moment of silence, as if whomever there belonged to was asserting asserting if I was inside. Of all the things I should have been doing, I continued on with my restless slumber. I was very much conscious, but my body hadn't caught up yet, even with danger bearing down on me from just beyond the door. It was as if I was completely paralyzed, unable to move. Without a doubt, this was sheer terror. Please, just leave. Hey, why isn't my body awake yet? If they came into my room right now, then... Wah! Eek! I sprung to my feet and threw my covers at my mom, who was opening the door. Whoa! Kichi! What's the matter? Ah, uh, sorry. Are you a burglar? About to go all qua on you or something around? Oh, I was still half asleep. I thought it was still one a one or two a.m. The morning sun was already streaming through the gap between the curtains. It felt nothing like morning. Yesterday, I must have fallen asleep right after that. Then I should have gotten a full ten hours of rest. Yeah, that's pretty good, more than most of us get. Why am I glaring? I shouldn't be glaring. Hello, camera. Uh, but it didn't feel like that at all. My internal clock was completely screwed up and my sense of balance felt off. I felt feverish enough that it was cl cl clear to me that I was still not well. Well, Kichi? Kichi? Ki ke Keichi? Keichi? I might be saying this wrong. Ke-i- Kaichi? Oh, gosh. Oh, how are you feeling? Can you make it to school? I was well enough to go, but I wasn't mentally prepared for it. I was still plagued with terror from yesterday. If I had swallowed that needle, what would have happened? And what if I had pierced my tongue? Ah, oh, that wouldn't be so bad if it pierced your tongue. So, that's the problem. There was undoubtedly a murderous intent, but I don't think that's all it was. If they really wanted to kill me, then there were other more certain ways to do it. They wouldn't resort to such a dubious method as having me swallow a needle. Meanwhile, Meaning, I didn't want to believe it, but going that far was just a threat for Mina and Myon. Aren't you glad you didn't die? But next time, we'll use more assured methods, like this gun we found. Like that. Something like sending a letter with a razor inside would have been a joke compared to this. Did you make it to the hospital? Did you take your medicine? Mm, yeah, kinda. Something about my mom's dubious gaze bothered me. She seemed more concerned about her son missing two days of school rather than him being sick. Uh, it was definitely mental fatigue. I wasn't really physically ill. 
It'll be hard for you to get back on track once your daily routine is thrown off. Come on, get up. They say wellness is a state of mind. And I have these positive vibes. I'd, I'd heard that line many times before. It was given an award in elementary school for having... Oh, I was given an award in elementary for having a perfect attendance. But it wasn't like I was healthier than everyone else. Come on, go wash your face. Breakfast is already ready. There isn't much time before Rina Chan comes and gets you. Mom's tone meant I couldn't argue about it, so I gave... So I had to give up on skipping a second day. By the way, were you the one who got bean paste all over the living room mall kitchen? You shouldn't do something like that. Your father was quite angry. I didn't feel particularly guilty for doing it, so I didn't have much of a reaction. Mom didn't question me any further about it. She headed back downstairs after she was certain I was getting up. But Miren said as she left yesterday, I'd hate if it I'd hate it if you missed school tomorrow came back and dwelt in back of my head. What did she mean by that? Is she crushing on me? If I just been misinterpreting, maybe needles and cake are how women show their affection towards men. That explains my interaction with that girl in middle school. I even I'd even have to really think about it. She was saying don't be absent. Taking that a bit further, it was the same as her saying, I should just go about living my life as if nothing happened. If I showed any signs of acting unusual, it would probably result in them making their move. For example, maybe I, hey, one of sleep, welcome to the stream. How's your day? For example, maybe I shouldn't pay attention to someone like Oishi. I'm a bee lurking as usual, by the way. Okay, I appreciate it. Thank you. Enticing me with something as unusual. Meaning if I didn't watch my mouth or did something, anything differently from the norm, it was good. That's good. It would end up flagging, flagging myself as someone who was not wanted. And it seemed that there was something that the girls didn't intend to forgive. So if I just went along as normal, no harm would come to me. Was that how it was going to be? All that misery I experienced up until yesterday would almost creepily just fade away. It was an enticing feel. Just by forgetting everything I'd seen or heard these last few days, I'd be able to keep living on like normal. There's no such, there's no way such a selfish thing could, I swallowed hard. Checking, there was not a needle in my throat at that time. I once again deliberated on the idea that I had just rejected. Yuen was probably a good person who had her friends at heart. She was giving me, who had mistakenly broken some rule of theirs, a chance. Oh, see, they actually do care. The needle was just a method that, to show that I should act the way I should in this town. Was what I did really something so unforgivable, but Myun had given me another chance. But she was saying, if I just forget everything and kept living on like I had been, I'd be forgiven. Kichi, your food is getting cold. It's going to get cold. Hurry up and get down here. Rina will be here if you don't hurry. Ah, I'm coming. I crammed my textbooks into my bags and hastily made my way downstairs. I picked... I picked at my somewhat bland breakfast. It seemed that I didn't have much time. It was already past when I usually met up with Rina. Given yesterday's events, she'd probably be here in the next five minutes. I needed to be ready to head to school by then. I had to forget everything that had happened the past two days. Forget it and forget it all and, and return to my normal life. For this to be normal, I'll have to be where I normally meet up with Rina. Today of all days, the rice was dry and hard to get down. Ding and dong. I jumped at the sound and dropped my chopsticks. That chime signaled that Rina had arrived. Mom hurried me along. Come on, Rina Chan's already here. Hurry, hurry. My mother's merry smile and my gloomy face were polar opposites. Mother, do not send me with this crazy lunatic. And someone please open all these Amazon packages that we've been leaving on our stairs here since we moved here six months ago. Honestly, I was reluctant to see Rina who was waiting there on the other side of the door. The Rina on the other side, was it the Rina I knew? I couldn't keep her waiting. I needed to do things as usual. Oh, okay. <laughs> Did anyone else just get flashed by Rina right there? I'm gonna have to roll that back off the stream. I wanna see if like that was just like a glitch or maybe like a secret. Morning! Psychopath. An invigoratory greeting fil filtered in from across the doorway. I came since the kitchen was a bit late. Will he be okay today? I wonder, I wonder. 
The manner in which Rina was concerned was without a doubt the Rina I knew. But that was probably only if I reciprocated. Get everything from yesterday, pretend as though things had not happened. Forget about the gruesome dismemberment. Forget about the mysterious deaths that happened the following years. Forget about the people falling to their deaths and the terminal illness, suicide, and lich and the disappearance. Forget it, forget it all. But what about our photographer, bro? We can't forget about him. Forget that Rina and Mion were scary. Of course, forget it all. Forget about everyone. Forget about the, the mochi too. Specifically, the forget, it, forget, 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 forget. Rina once again asked to make sure. Can you make it cool? Yeah, I'm fine. Great! Then let's go! Or else, Michan is waiting. Rina showed me her usual bright smile. I couldn't find any hint of deceit in her expressions. My nervousness dis dissipated, giving way to relief. Okay, we seem to be doing good. No murderous intent so far. But you see, Satoko-chan was so ins insistent she could do it. We were walking, Rina talked about a lot of different stuff more than usual. Hmm, then... Satoko-chan is, cl Satoko is clumsy, so she failed no matter how many times she tried. Oh, she was so cute. Everything Rina talked about was just silly nonsense, so I just replied every so often and laughed from time to time. It was rather laid-back conversation. We passed by one of our neighbors and they called out to us. Oh my, Kichan chan and Rina-chan, aren't you two a bit late today? Mirin chan uh, said she was going on ahead. Uh-oh, did Mirin chan look mad, I wonder? I wonder. Oh, she looked downright murderous. Don't know why I use that word, but that's how I would describe her. We need to hurry up, Kichan kun As we, as we smiled and parted ways with the, our neighbor, they turned back toward me and stuck, stuck out a tongue. What? Not expecting that, I couldn't help but crack a smile. Ah, oh, Kinshan smiled. Uh, what? Rina stopped and stared at me. I was thinking that you still hadn't recovered from your cold since you seemed down this morning, Kinshan. But now you seem fine. I wasn't expecting an old man to stick out his tongue at me. That's a once-in-a-lifetime deal. With a grin, she gently poked my cheek. Oop. It had a needle in it. It was bright, sincere smile. Hey, Kinshan Marabua. How can you still doubt Rina after she showed you a smile like that? Maybe I just had a high fever up until today, and I imagined everything that I thought happened because I was bedridden and delirious. I really hope, hope that was the case. If God would grant me just one wish, there was only one thing that I'd wish for. I would want to be sponsored by Raid Shadow Legend. I mean, wh uh, what had happened in the past few days, more specifically from the Night of the Wat Watangashi, up until last night, I wanted all of that to have never happened. I wonder how many times I'd wished for these past few days. As long as Rina kept on smiling like this, I don't think I might, it might become a reality. So I want Rina to keep on smiling. Keep on smiling. Keep on smiling. So, Kichan kun Uh-oh. Oh, those mochis yesterday. Did you eat them all? Why'd the, why'd the bugs stop? Why does she have control over the bugs? I am not happy with this. The vain wish of mine was just instantly shattered. My heart began palpitating. The relaxing morning mood suddenly became frigid. Rina's smile was the same as usual. Her eyes were gentle as usual. Those mochi just did. You eat them all? Of course, she wasn't asking the question at face value. In other words, Rina was asking, did you get the message? She was probably trying to convey that. Uh, Kishanku? I was looking to give an answer, Rina stopped walking and stared deeply into my eyes. Ah, uh, don't hit Sakei Kichan Kumaraboa. Rina was acting the same as always, wasn't she? I need to respond in my usual way. Naturally, of course. Ahem. <clears throat> but both my throat and mouth had gone dry, and my lips were stuck together. Hurry and answer, Kichan. Think, man, think! Not that much time had passed, I could still keep the conversation going naturally. Think, man, talk! I had to say something qu quickly, quickly. Did Duh. Rina playfully mimicked what I said. I finally squeaked something out. Rina's reaction was still Nora. D deadly There wasn't as long of a pause I had thought. Somehow I finally squeaked out the rest. D delicious. However, my strained efforts ne neither sullied nor brightened Rina's expression. For a moment, I panicked, thinking I had replied incorrectly. 
But after a few moments, Rena broke into her usual soft smile and giggled with a joyful voice that seemed to echo through the morning air. Being, being strung alone by that laugh, I couldn't help but laugh as well. Let's see. So, did you eat all of them, I wonder, I wonder? Again, bugs. Why are you cutting out at me like that? My timid smile froze again. Did you make it without swallowing the sewing needle? It's rich in iron. Was that what she was asking? If I had swallowed it, then I wouldn't be here. And I couldn't fish all of them. There's still one left. I was scared out of my wits, but that's how I played it. Huh? What about the home homework to see if you could tell which one Rena made? Uh, that, that homework uh, was due today, right? Yeah, it's due today. Michan will get angry that it was probably a penalty game ready for you. I shall not lose this game. I really wish they let you decide, though. I'm pretty sure this is just the story. We both laughed at each other again. To a casual observer, it was just a typical morning. If I could just let myself believe, then even I'd think it was just the usual morning routine, but I was certain I wasn't mistaken. There was something unimaginable buried beneath the fa facade of the giggling arena. Lies. I recalled that unexpected piercing voice that I could hardly believe came from Rena's mouth. That the moment that image crossed my mind, I felt a cold sweat trickle down my back. Was it only at that particular time that something evil had possessed Rena? No, that was wrong. That was still Rena. U Rena Uishi-san told me, didn't she? Actually, I looked into her before Ryagu-san moved away to hear something. She was suspended from school. It seems she went through her school building and broke all the windows. Rina had a disorder that normal people didn't. That's kind of how disorders work. Uh, how, how pleasantly she smiled, that fact would not change. But I couldn't even imagine how she looked as she broke all the glass throughout the school. One thing I knew was there wasn't something spur of the moment. If it was some sudden outburst of anger, then maybe she'd break a pane or two. But she broke all the windows all throughout her school. Just imagine going through your own school, breaking the windows with a bat. Oh, okay. Swinging full force at each panel, one after the another, paying no heed to the flying shards. That would be kind of fun though, right? I mean, just going full ham on a window with a bat? That's like one of my like life goals to be able to do that at some point. Just thinking, just shatter something. Your classmates aghast, unable to move from the sudden turn of events. I wonder where she could have found the most windows lined up in a row. Probably the hallway. Why is he... Smash. Walk. Wind up. Smash. Walk. Wind up. Smash. It was difficult for me to connect that horrifying image with Rena smiling at me right now. But I just had to imagine it. Impossible because it was unimaginable that naive, naive way of thinking no longer worked. Okay, you can, a little warning every time you do that would be nice. It is unsettling, so good sound development, I guess. The unpleasant piercing sound of shattered glass, the crunching noise as Rena's tread across the broken shards walking towards me. Rena's classmates going pale as they forget to even breathe. I wonder what they did as Rena came closer, breaking windows along her path. Did they earnestly try to bring her to her senses by saying something? Or did they jump at her trying to stop her savage savagery? Or did they run to the staff room after being directed there by the teachers? Probably none of those. In the face of that blood-curdling sight, Arena busting windows after window, undoubtedly all they could do was silently clear a path for her. Dumbfounded, just clearing the path for Arena to continue. It was far too violent an act for them to seek refuge by looking the other way. That's not to say they were looking the other way. They were doing the other things they could do to protect themselves. They had done something differently from the rest. They may have suddenly found themselves as Rena's new target. What could Rena have done to whoever attracted her attention? The answer was obvious. She would have undoubtedly acted according to her whims. Meaning they would, I would, be the next window. Rena staring into my eyes, shards of glass crunching and cracking underfoot as she drew closer. I was also drawn into her eyes, paralyzed. Oh, I just noticed the menu moves. Can't really see it because I'm blocking it, but it's actually bouncing. Ow. Then it struck me with the bat over and over again, like I was one of those windows. 
I crush it on the floor, desperately protecting my head. Okay, this is just imaginary, buddy. Calm down. All right, we don't need to get into your fantasies here. Arena didn't take care whether it was my head or my back. Zealously, she hits me again and again. You done yet? What kind of expression was she making as she was doing this over and over again? Imagination, buddy. I peered up to see. Her expression was so indifferent, it was completely unnerving. Because no matter how many times she struck me, I didn't make as pleasant a sound as the other windows. Oh my, but I have glass bones! They're shattering! She struck me continuously, over and over again. The sound Rita wanted didn't come out. Do it with your mouth then, buddy. Just go shatter, shatter. The housemates standing around didn't try to stop her. They didn't want, want to be the next window. Somebody save me, turning a blind eye unless we were hanging out. But of course, everyone in class scrambled to obtain the highest standardized test scores. It gained nothing from saving a cram school tryhard like me. Oh. Splooch. He splooged. Eventually, there would be a faint sound similar to one you crack open a walnut, and some sort of reddish black spray would shoot out. Yeah, gross. Anyway, it wasn't that, Rena. Re Rena momentarily lost herself in her anger. After forcing myself to breathe and calming down my heart, I recalled what Ushi told me. Yeah, that was a full-length story you just told. You didn't really calm down quickly. And in the counselor's medical report, he recorded all of the conversations he had with Rina-san. It shows up, and quite a bit at that. What does? She, she mentioned the words Oishira-sama. Following that, Rina was suspended and had regular examinations at the hospital. Then, as Rina was undergoing counseling, she said it was over and over, Oshira-sama. It seems that Oshira-sama sh uh, she spoke of was like a ghost appearing in her house every night, standing over her pillow, looking down at her. There was only a piece of their conversation, so I still couldn't see the big picture, but it was by no means a ha happy little conversation. Then, uh, what Rina did was she saying that ghastly incident was a result of her being possessed by Oshira-sama. Up until now, I didn't want to believe in Oshira-sama's curse. That's why I wanted to say that the mysterious deaths every year happened because of some sort of conspiracy. Every time I talked with a Ushu Uye, why do I struggle with these names every time? Uishi san, I was more certain that the deaths were the work of men and not of some curse. Except if it was people per per perpetrating the incidents, my friends were somehow deeply connected. If I refused to believe that the curse was real, then I would have to believe those who acted the kindness to me were deeply involved in the incidents. Why? How? Where? Which? For what reason? Was Rena? Was everybody? It was much more painful and troublesome than accepting that it was just Oshira-sama's curse. In the aftermath, Rena had admitted to her doctor that it was because she, had pos she was possessed by Oshira-sama. I felt a strange sense of relief from that. So that's how it is. There wasn't a second side to Rina. She did that because she was possessed by something strange like Oshira-sama. It wasn't Rina's fault. Oshira-sama was the one to blame. I knew this was all backwards. Refusing to believe there was a curse, I wanted there to be a human perpetrator. Now that my close friends were the ones under suspicion, I changed my beliefs on my own conv convince, saying it was Oshira-sama's curse to blame. Which was, which was the better choice, accepting that Oshiro-sama's curse exists, or that uh, Rina and the rest of them were deeply involved in the string of mysterious deaths? I didn't want to think about it. If I just didn't think about it, I'd be able to continue the same as always. I wanted to believe that. But that was no longer possible. I had received their message. It was pathetic of me to try and bend the meaning of my own imagination, regardless. My opponent being a human or a curse, I won't let it kill me. As if I had just bend over and give in. Name's Kichi-chan, not Ben. Bend over. For no good reason at all. Okay, we're back to reality, and we're at school. kichi you've been making a really weird face. Why, I wonder, I wonder. Inhaling sharply upon hearing Mina's voice, I came back to my senses. Before I had realized that we were already at the entrance, we're actually inside. Shaking my head a few times, I exercised all those terrifying I exercised. Okay, no, uh, no matter how you look at it, there is no way Rina could have done such a terrible thing, except she kind of did, it's on record. 
Uh, it was like trying to class eight my class eight myself. <laughs> uh, did I miss something? Gonna, gonna boing. As I slid the door open, a blackboard eraser loaded with chalk dropped down on my head the moment I stepped into the classroom. The chalk dust went into my eyes, inducing a brief momentary ag. In that blood <clears throat> I'm gonna do her voice correctly. Give me a second. Let me let me liquefy my vocal cords real quick. Ah, that's good. <clears throat> oh ho ho! How befitting for the tr trod Kiji Kansan. Good morning to both of you, Kishachi and Rina. Kichi and Mina. Good morning, or Takashan and Rika-chan. Not quite in the mood for it, I didn't really react to Sotako's trap. Sotako braced herself as I passed by, expecting me to attack her. She seemed a bit disappointed as I simply walked by silently. What is this? How discouraging indeed. Jin doesn't seem back to his usual self yet. Yeah. Take it easy on him, okay? Today, suddenly there was a slap down on my shoulder. It hurt a bit. Hey, Kichan. Did you get enough rest? It was Mion. My mind was full with stuff about Rina, but Mion was still part, uh, also a party of interest. Remember, Kichan, that hawkish gaze from yesterday. Yeah, morning. What's with that unenergetic greeting? Did you eat the mochi I brought you? Because I ate them, I'm like this. Those words were itching to be blurted out. I really just didn't have the appetite. I ate a few, but quite a lot were left over. Huh? What about the homework? Do you have an answer for which one was Rina's? I can't believe you'd forget your homework. But it's obvious which one it was, though, because he distinctly said one was very different than the other before the needle. <laughs> Sheesh, then we can't help it. Time for your penalty. <laughs> Flushing a lurid smile, Mion returned to her seat. There was nothing from our exchange that would cause our classmates to suspect anything was amiss. But of course, anyone listening to our conversation up until this point morning wouldn't see anything suspicious. That was why it was so frightening. They acted in a way that that regardless of whatever happened to Kichu and Mirabara, no one would ever suspect them. The fact had me terrified. Soon the teacher came. After she asked uh, how I felt and took on attendance, another door ordinary day began. I can make those sounds too. Oh, I just realized, is it not getting the... Oh, my bad. Ah, oh, bugger. The sound was on. Okay, way sorry about that. Well, nothing really creepy happened, it was just the bugs would cut out at certain points. I talked about when they did. Let me know if they're ever too loud or too quiet. This free study period was a convenient time to consider where I stood. I stood approximately three feet from the door. I gently closed my eyes and pondered the ridiculous position I was in right now. First of all, what I shouldn't forget was how dangerous of a situation I was in. I had fallen out of favor with them. Oh, there was the music. Oh. Interacting with Ueshira Sans multiple times, I could see it as I was getting closer to the heart of the matter. The warning yesterday with the mochi was a good indicator of that. No calling it a warning was just my habit of understanding things that probably had no meaning beyond stunting my progress and buying themselves some time. Until they had a method of completely erasing me. They were just biding their time. Even though they were keeping me under their thumb with threats, it didn't change the fact that I knew too much. The chilling sensation of my desk made me recall Satoshi Hayo, the boy who was using this seat until last year when he disappeared. Uh, was also sim was he also similar to me? Did he learn something he shouldn't have and was and was erased? Darn. 
I couldn't let them get rid of me so easily. Never. But were they really trying to kill me? I've had these contradictory feelings for a while now, even though I suspected them. I felt I had to cover for them. With all of their suspicious behavior, a morning like this just made it all seem like an elaborate hoax. No. That's just what I want to believe. Doubting my friends? Covering for them? My life was in danger. Or was it? Actually, I was debating the wrong point. Given my current situation, those points were something that should have been deliberated on a long time ago. But really, Rena and the rest of them, were they actually aiming to kill me? The little voice inside me continued to torment me with these unresolved trains of thought. Are you an idiot, Kichan Marber? The answer should be obvious. But maybe that sewing needle might have been just been an accident, right? How could you screw up and drop a sewing needle into a piece of mochi? The benefit of that doubt can only go so far, but not completely irrational. Both and Mjern had acted and behaved suspiciously, but maybe it was all some sort of misunderstanding. What kind of misunderstanding? It wasn't just suspicious, it was outright ludicrous. Ludicrous, right? Rina just corrected me for lying, and Muren only asked me what I had for lunch. Rina was standing outside, outdoor eavesdropping for a good hour, you know. She was probably just waiting for my phone call to end. For a whole hour outside your room, and it is normal to go home afterwards without saying anything? You heard from Oshira-san, didn't you, uh, about what Rina did at her former school? Uh, at the hospital, she said it was Oshira-sama's fault. She... What? <laughs> okay, that was a big Cut it out, Kichan Maraba. Don't you realize they are out to kill you? <laughs> I never really blurted those words out loud, hearing myself say that so directly left me dumbfounded. A few months afterwards, I had to look around to check if anyone else had heard. My little soliloquy cut a little too close to the truth. Even though I could feel that murderous intent from Rita and the others, part of me somewhere was still trying to deny that. This late in the game, such his hesitation could be fatal. I knew that. But I was just your average student, a man living his normal, ordinary life. You think I could suddenly believe that my friends who I had been happily laughing together with up until last Sunday now intended to kill me, right? The two soft down. Now this time, I remembered to keep my voice down so only I could hear it. There was one thing I now understood. Wait, I just blurted that out loud. Check to see if anyone noticed, and then just went right back to mumbling. Interesting. There was one thing I now understand, I was too soft. I didn't completely understand how dangerous Rina and the rest of them were. No, I wasn't trying to understand. Let me just... I don't want to make sure it's not, not being too loud. I didn't listen because I was too, uh, too busy pretending to be ejected. I didn't comprehend it, I was just running away. I didn't comprehend it, so nobody had any noted notion to try and kill me. I needed to get rid of such naive thoughts. As I made that resolution, I heard the bell signaling the end of class. So soon. The day was already over. I didn't recall eating lunch or doing anything in class. My friends were putting their desks together in preparation for club activities. Not long ago, I would probably have happily jumped into the My, my, Kichan, how rude of you to even think about leaving. The way Sigurdo spoke was so typical and familiar, it almost physically hurt. Oh, Kichan, is today not a good day, I wonder, I wonder. And we were going to win big together, huh? Hey, oh. Hey, oh. Seeing Rina expression, which said she was really looking forward to today, was hard to take. Hey, Kichan, maybe Urush san. Is just some enormous jerk trying to separate me from the others by lying to me. Slap! Trying to expose such weak minded thinking, I slap myself in the face. <laughs> Kijaku! Yeah, was Reno really trying to kill me? I wish someone uh, would tell me if. tell me it was a hoax. I didn't care if it actually was one or not, I just want someone to say it was. Gah, yet another weak willed thought. Weakling, how did I even become this naive? Are you all right? Does your head hurt? Like that was how my inner dilemma appeared to Rina. 
You're pale. Can you make it home by yourself? Maybe I should accompany you home, I wonder. No, it's okay. I'm sorry. I can get home by myself. Just have the meeting without me. Upon hearing that, I wasn't going to participate in the club meeting. Mion pouted unhappily. Since Kichan was so bent on revenge match, we were even going to play that deduction game from before too. Kichan doesn't have the burning desire for a rematch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are being not working for some reason. Like the string doesn't bend properly anymore. And so it doesn't have enough force to close the door. How pathetic. <laughs> I tried my best to design it, alright? I wouldn't fall for some dumb taunt. Without even a real retort, I just grabbed my bag and was about to get up. Someone's hand perched itself gently on my head. Kichi doesn't seem to be well. How very unfortunate. It was Rika-chan. She was dressed up- she was stretched up as fuck. Hello, two cent. Welcome. As far as she, as she could, doing her best to pat my head with her petty hand. How's your day going? It felt so nice, which made things even harder. Sorry, everybody. See ya. That's all I said as I quickly left the classroom. He said something to me as I was leaving, but I couldn't make it out. I managed to make it all the way to the entrance. Uh, in the state of mind, took... Put my shoes, put them on, and went forward. Onward! So, Tucson, I gotta talk to you about that whole... You said you wanted... We wanted to talk about seeing what I could do with art. I think I'd want to try that. You can, like, talk about that sometime. That'd be great. And went for... I was pretty sure it was you. Talked to a few people that day. <laughs> heart, uh, heart in the heart, Kichan Mirabua. Heart in your heart, warrior. They were, for some unfathomable reason, trying to kill me. They were plotting something dubious, watching my every move. But I couldn't hate them. Because weren't they my friends? Let me, let me adjust that so it's more in front of me. Uh, part of me lamented my naive... My naive, while another part lamented the fact that I had lost something important. My lamenting over it in the first place. It felt like my consciousness was being ripped out of my body. If this is Oshira-sama's curse was like... Then it was just too harsh. Hey, Ashiro-sama, I was wrong for not believing in your curse. Sorry, my bro. We fixed this. But I believed in it now. Completely. Your curse does exist. So seriously, give me a break. I beg you. Come on. Do you want a sacrifice of a virgin? I can provide one real easy. Kind of reminds me of Ghost Recon. Landscape. The little farm right there. Then it was unusually bland. It had no flavor or aroma. The misuse soup that normally tantalized my appetite instead tasted like nothing but boiled water. Dad was eating with us that night. It was a rare occurrence in this household. When he got into his work, he ate and slept on his own schedule. My dad never cared about the time since my dad was at the dinner table. It was either meant that he had reached a good point to take a break or he was in a slump. So yeah, he just doesn't understand the motivation the motivation creators have. Your partnership was just a verbal agreement, wasn't it? If it's so hard to agree on things, why not just end it? I feel like it's an indus industry with a lot of back scratching, but when it gets in the way of business, I wasn't able to pick up much on my mom and dad's conversation, but I couldn't tell. It wasn't a very pleasant topic. That, of course, made the disgusting food even less appetizing. Staring lit list listlessly at the exchange between my parents my mind wandered off at the same thought processing i had i was going all day friends close to me no they used to be friends but i couldn't could no longer trust them right now i was greatly lacking in allies people i trusted people i could depend on when push came to shove they were something i just didn't have having just one ally would have been incredibly reassuring in the currently hopeless situation I was in, I put I put down my chopsticks and looked over at my parents who were still talking about work. The first course of action that came to mind was to tell my parents everything. 
Currently, there wasn't a single person from Hirozawa I could trust 100% that meant the only people I could trust were my parents. If I told them everything that happened until now, would they understand? Rina, for example. That neighborly Rina who was so diligent in looking after me came to get me every every day and sometimes brought over a share of what she made. How could I explain that she wanted to kill me? No matter how I explained it, it would probably be difficult for anyone, anybody to comprehend. My somewhat eccentric dad wouldn't understand and my high-strung mom it would probably drag me off to the psychiatrist in the blink of an eye. Sadly, that was the amount of trust that existed in our relationship. Even if they did come to understand, what could they possibly do? Unless they could uncover the truth, they wouldn't be able to protect me. No. By informing them of these unnecessary things, I'd be putting my parents in danger as well. Considering that the victims in past incidents were often married, married couples, I couldn't even joke about it. For the entire Marabor family to have an accident or just to vanish into thin air, it was easily possible in Hirozi- ki na mi za wa ki na ma zi wa ki na ma ki na mi za wa Why do I struggle with this name so much? ni na mi za wa ni ma ki na mi za wa ki na mi za wa Okay, ki na mi za wa ki na mi za wa was important here was knowing something unnecessary put you in danger. The, the most unsettling question was how did they know that I knew? As long as they didn't know, my parents might not fall victim. That was one th way to think about it, I guess. At least it was like that in my case. After I fought out things started becoming odd. In other words, it meant the following. As long as my parents didn't know anything, Nothing would happen to them. As long as my parents were here, this house would be safe haven for them. I knew there were just assumptions based on conjecture, conjecture on the top of conjecture. Wanting this house to be, be a safe haven, that was the pinnacle of my weak-willed method of thinking. I had to concede that it was not completely safe, it was only safer than the outside. I knew that I couldn't rely on my parents. No, I couldn't risk getting my parents involved. Then the only person who can could be my ally would be Ushiro-san, him and him alone. He was the only person who understood the situation I'm in. He didn't care so much about my safety, but he was without a doubt passionate about solving this case. It was a bit frustrating. Ushiro-san was basically the whole reason I was in this mess. Now to get out of it, I had to rely on him. Meaning it was all going according to his devices. It was just my job to look appetizing while bobbing in the waves as bait. Then, when the fish started gathering around, Ushiro-san would pull up the big haul. It was slightly infuriating, but even but even I thought that was the best course of action. So then, what should I do? Patience was the first rule of fishing. Just keep waiting until the fish actually bites. But I wasn't simply bait. There were lots of ways for me to struggle before being devoured. When they struck, I needed to somehow dodge just enough and tag out, tag out to Ushiro-san. No question, it was going to be hard. Then timing, on timing to bring Ushiro-san in would be difficult. He was in the city, not he was on. So if I phoned him in my moment of need, it would take him about 30 minutes to reach me. So I needed to run away for 30 minutes. For example, if we set up a rendezvous point for a dire situation or something, i just have to hide out there until Ushiro-san arrived. There we go, we're planning, we're getting things in motion. Okay, I can almost see it now. It was still being ch it was, I, I was still being chased around in the dark by boogeymen, but now I knew which way to go, I would never have imagined this would be reassuring. Oh yeah, it would probably be best if I had a concealed weapon for when things got rough. Typically that would call for a switchblade, but that wasn't too reassuring for combat. Also, since it was recognized as a weapon by the public, that also wasn't good. Really, when the time comes, a long weapon like a bat would work in my favor. I remember there was a metal bat at school. Uh, I could be confident with that when push came to shove. If I pretend I was practicing my swing, then it would be suspicious. Wouldn't be suspicious of me to carry it around. I could go to school early tomorrow and secure it. Just possessing a weapon may be enough to deter them. Also, one more thing: thing insurance. It could be something like a note or memo. I could write down everything that's happened as a sort of journal. 
In case I suddenly vanished, the journal would be left behind. With my journal in his possession, Oshiro-san should be able to avenge my death. Uh, he's going full out with this. I left my parents engrossed in their conversation about work and went back to my room. I tore out a piece of paper from a notebook and made my way to my desk. Last time I wrote a journal was for summer homework in elementary school. Yeah, I'm not much of a record keeper either. In the off chance something had bad had happened, the police could use my diary as a lead, so I should only write down the facts. How should I start? To whom it may concern. On this day, February 20-something of 2022, I have been violently murdered. Alas, it was betrayal like none hath thus seen before in the valley of Hiwazana Waga Wangi Shikamawa. I jotted down my thoughts as they came. I Kichamaba am in fear for my life. It made me laugh nervously. It was a line that showed up often in detective stories. I never even dreamed that I would be in the type of situation where I'd write it myself. I do not know why they are after my life. Rena and the others were suspicious, but I had no proof, and that's why I couldn't write anything more. I laughed wryly at myself, writing such a passage draped in mystery. Will the police be able to get the hint from reading this enigmatic passage? I can only pray that they will. Dude, you're dead. Like, at that point, you don't really care. Write down what you know. Someone tried to kill you at one point. Put that in the note. Uh, you'll never need it to play its part. Here, I laughed nervously. It was too simple, so I wrote down one more line I just thought of. The only thing I do know is that it has to do with Ashirasama's curse. Is that too much? I probably shouldn't write more than that. If I wrote any more, then it would seem like I ju was just delusional. In order to appear to the reader that the person who had written this was of sound mind, I chose not to write anything else at that point. I just needed to add more as I learned more about the truth. I folded the paper and thought about a place to hide it. By, the by hiding it somewhere obvious, there was a chance that they would uncover it instead. On the other hand, if it was in too obscure of a location, then there was the risk of nobody finding it at all. In the end, I decided to take the clock off the wall and stick my folded note on the back of it with, a, with scotch tape. After that, I put the clock back into its normal position. Yeah. It didn't look like anything was hidden behind it. Now I needed to set up such that if anything happens to me, my parents could find it. I looked at it from countless different angles until I was satisfied that I made my way downstairs. My parents were still talking about work. I didn't look like I was going to end anytime soon, so I cut in. Uh, sorry to interrupt. I have something I want to talk to you about. I've never started a conversation off like that before, so my parents were both startled. They stopped talking and turned towards me. What is it, Kinshin? I have a favor to ask of you. Please listen. Um, just in case, yeah? If it's not urgent, can we do this later? Right now, Mom, Mommy and Daddy have something urgent they're talking about. I didn't think their talk more urgent than mine. In any case, I stated my request. Just in case, okay? If I die... Both my parents' eyes went as wide as saucers. <laughs> if I die, I want you to put a buckle on my coffin. If they did that, then it would be fine. This is... <laughs> This is a weird way to do it. Yeah, I sure do. You could have like gotten anything else. A clock to make this. Yeah, please. An old clock. Bury, bury, bury me inside with a bed of clocks. As the song would go. I don't know. If they did that, then they'd probably find it my mem memoir. Both my parents remain wide-eyed, not moving in. I uh, feels all right. See you later. <laughs> it just goes back up the stairs. <laughs> I couldn't blame them. I made that clock in shop class and I really like it. So please. What's the matter, Kicho? <laughs> Did something happen? Mom was finally able to ask me with questioning gay. Of course, this was a normal response for when someone's son suddenly talked about a subject like this. Like, I felt bad about making them worry, but right now, I just wanted them to think about the clock in my room. The awkward mood leaving the room. In silence, I decided to go back up to my room. I want to go to school early tomorrow, so I'm going to bed. You're just going to leave him on that? Good night. Saying only that, I left the living room. What? Oh, you fool. You're making so I I can understand, like, I'm not in this stressful situation he is, but... You could have said, like, anything else. 
Maybe I'll get school early tomorrow and secure that bat. I should I should make today the last day I went to school with Rena. As I climbed the stairs, I heard my mom call my name, but I pretended not to hear. It wasn't something I could talk about with my parents. If I talked about it, I would only make things more dangerous. The fight that had begun was mine and mine alone. I couldn't rely on anybody. I wouldn't be killed. Not when I still knew nothing. Alright, I think that's the conclusion of another chapter. Ooh, suspense. You have received new tips, not feeling so hot. I always feel hot. You, new tip. Uh... Kichun Kun's been feeling down lately. Maybe he's in a bad mood. I wonder. Maybe he's on his. Man, that's gross. Uh. <laughs> yuck, yuck, yuck. It was a. Was that. I was gonna laugh if that's where the hint ended. <laughs> Just like right there. What do you think? Don't know. Could be that Kichun Kun, maybe. I don't know. The day kitchen was in the car talking to some tubby middle-aged guy, right? Yeah. No mistake, that Ushiro, he's probably fed him something fishy. He was so serious. Kichun kuns face was so pale. See, you might, you might not know this, but he's actually the me messenger of Shirosama. Huh? What do you mean? Whenever he shows up, someone is demoned away. No lie. Oh, is that so? The year before last, when Rika-chan's mom drowned, right? Right before that, she was visited by Uishi. Now that you mention it, it happened before Satoshi-kun's transferred out. Transferred? <laughs> You're so sweet, Mina. So this time, he's appeared before Kita. So Kita-chan's going to be demoned away, too? Empty signs hung in the air. Then it was suddenly interrupted. By loud laughter. <laughs> when did that happen? Interesting. Save. Might as well use the save slots. Yep, chapter 10, okay. I think it only goes to chapter 12? <coughs> Wrong <coughs> pipe. <coughs> okay, I'm good. I'm, I'm not dying. This was the first time I'd ever woke with such clarity, coughing on my own spit. It was 5:59 moments before my alarm could go off. That is the worst feeling in the world. I was amazed at the precision of my internal clock. I had made preparations for the next day of school before I went to bed. I changed quickly and descended to the deserted lower floor. It appeared that my mom was still asleep, but neither breakfast nor lunch was ready. Yesterday, I was I was just unliterally declared that I would be leaving early today, so I couldn't. It couldn't be helped. I slathered jam on some bread and topped it with inst instant cocoa, just as uh, uh, uh. as I was fishing up breakfast. Mom rose groggily from her slumber. My kitchen, you're up early. There's some sort of school event. Uh, not really. Answering bluntly, I picked up my bag and stood after stuffing two slices of bread down my throat. You're leaving already? What about lunch? If you don't wait a bit, I can I can't make it. If I wait for her to make my lunch, then I would be end up being the same time as usual. If I did that, I would raise the chance of me running into Rena and Miran on the way. Yes, from today onward I was going to go to school alone. I'll be fine for today. Then what will you do for lunch? I'll slip out and buy some bread or something at the store. Really? Then here's some lunch money. Be sure to bring back the receipt. I took a thousand yen bill from mom and slipped it into my pocket. It's pretty early. Is, is Rina Chen up this early as well? No, just me. Did you tell Rina Chen that you were leaving early? I have no response to tell her every, every little detail now, do I? Finding it difficult answering the onslaught of questions, I made an annoyed face. Tell me that I went ahead when she comes. Hey, Kichan, wait! 
It's not that I didn't trust my parents, I just couldn't rely on them. They couldn't help me. They couldn't help me. I could only hope that they didn't get involved. And the packages are still there. We have bigger priorities than the murder, right? Clean the clutter of your- Oh, I think my mic's actually blocking my camera. That might be why I'm glaring. He didn't get involved. It was safer that way. A lone knight riding on a journey. My mom's annoyed voice was cut off by the slam of the door. Yeah, now I'm, I'm- I know I feel like the villain. Don't be mean to your mom. For the first time since I moved here, I headed down the road to school alone. Up until now, I had always walked down the same path at the same time every day. So I always met with the same people at the same places. But the day was different. I didn't meet the people I would normally, and nobody was in the places where I would have normally met them. Of course, Rena wasn't in the spot where we usually meet, and there wasn't anyone at the spot where we would have to meet with Mion. The length of the trees, shadows, the morning air, and the brightness of the sun. It was a completely different type of morning from what I was used to. Without a doubt, it felt strange. It left me with the impression that I had destroyed the illusion Hirozama had set, upon, set up for me before it had enough time to prepare all those props needed to deceive me. My, Kichanku, you're so early today. Is everyone meeting it early this morning? The person who called out to me was someone we already passed by. They were talking... Taking a walk along the edge of the field. The name was, uh, I forgot. Of course, this wasn't the spot where we usually passed each other. I woke up early today, so I thought it would be a good change of pace. That's all. I threw out a, an excuse. Oh, what about Rina Chan and Mion Chan? Are you by yourself today? Well, yeah. I was being asked the same type of question my mom was asking, so I answered them in the same uninterested, vague manner. It wasn't funny uh, being asked where Rena was each time I passed by someone, but maybe it was to be expected. It was because for so long we were always together so am am amicably. Even I felt that if I let my guard down, we could still be fr- Papakichi? Don't think about that anymore. You spent all day yesterday thinking about how dangerous it was. It's off, don't you? Beep beep. A car horn blared from out of nowhere. Even though I was walking lost in thought, that horn was way too close. A mechanical behemoth barreled at me from behind, catching me completely off guard. By the time I turned around, the van's hulking chassis was almost on top of me. I'd seen plenty of cars veer to the opposite shoulder to avoid pedestrians, but this car was doing the opposite. It felt like... It felt like there was somebody on the opposite shoulder, and the van was swerving in my direction to avoid them. That blissful, ignorant train of thought delayed me realizing something much, much more important. That large mass was hurling right at me. Was it going to hit me? The inside of my head instantly flooded with a painful, cold liquid. In that moment, the scene before me, no, time itself had frozen. Oh, that hurt my eyes. Ow. In the silence of the frozen moment, I compared the van close that I had no way to dodge. It and my body, the upper half twisted awkwardly in order to look behind me. There was no way I could dive out of the way in my current position. If I lost focus now, this moment could unpause and I would probably be plowed over, caught in this silly pose. Die like Kazuma from, uh... A God's Blessing or something. <laughs> Bend my upper body toward the, pat the paddy by the side of the road. If I bent far enough, I'd get away with just being hit by the side view mirror. Ha <laughs> ha. As soon as the thought crossed my mind, the temporal status was shattered by the deafening sound of the van. I'm pretty sure, like, this guy has superpowers. The amount he's able to think in the span of, like, a second. The side mirror struck my shoulder, sending me spinning off through the air like a top locked in my contorted position. Kerslap. Dead. Sent tumbling through the air, I crashed into the muddy paddy by the side of the road. My tardy body was soiled and drenched, but the choice I had made in that instant was unmistakably for the best. I was covered in mud, but when the alternative was being hit by the car, it was the closest I could be, unscathed. Rising out from the paddy, I had enough in me to glare over the, at the stopped van and yell profanities at the driver. 
You mother in bed, bed, murder, bed, bed, in a, in a, in a, in a van driving, in a, in a, in a furry. In a, in a, in a, I'm not sure if he was able to see me, but the van sped off suddenly. Wait, darn it. This was what they call a hit and run, wasn't it? I shouldn't help but continue yelling out profan- You couldn't help but continue calling out profanities. The disgrace from being covered in mud hurt more than any physical wound. I slogged through the muddy paddy and made my way back to the road. This is a crime, gosh darn it! Crap, I'll track you down and sue you! If I go looking for a van, I'm sure to find it in this little village! The path was on ha had rice paddies on either side, and it had become so narrow that one car could barely fit, though. It wasn't a place you could tear a full speed down in car, let alone past the pedestrians. Not only was it a narrow road, but the car just now was closer to my side of the road than the others when it went past me. Even as I cursed, I was desperately trying to suppress the dark cloud rolling up within me. This wasn't just a hit and run, that car just now was trying to run me over, wasn't it? Thinking back, I did feel there was, had been a car creeping up on me slowly for a while. That's right, as soon as I had parted ways with the person talking, taking a walk, I had that feeling the whole time. If I had wanted to pass me, then I had no shortage of chances. Normally, I would have felt suspicious and turned around sooner, but I was lost in thought and... Ow, my neck hurts. And was now kicking myself for not realizing it was... It that's... Their, their words... It was there sooner, and then, when the path became narrow and there was no one else in sight, he floored it. If I had hesitated for even a moment, the result would have been a no laughing matter. As the adrenaline rush from nearly being ran over subsided and the realization of just how terrifying the preceding events were sunk in, there is no doubt about it. That van was intentionally trying to hit me. A cold sea sweat sweeped from my scalp and slid down my back before dripping off. I'm pretty sure that's just the mud. I struggled to avoid falling into panic. <laughs> there was still the possibility that this was really just an accident. Calm down, Kitchen. But also, don't be so naive, Kitchen. Kitchy. Being that lax will, will get you killed next time. You need to always be on your toes. Don't give them any openings. If my enemy was really out to kill me, then the next time they would use a more reliable method. If that time came and I was acting like I was now, I being converted, covered in mud was, was the price I had paid for my own naive. My own naive. I covered, covered in mud, but without injury, not even a sprain. I guess this was what you call the silver lining. I began walking again, this time cautiously. I will. Ooh, I wouldn't even show a hint of carelessness. I had suspected only Rena and the others up until now. Nah, no, it was because I had suspected them that I had believed there was something. Wishasan had said so, didn't he? There was the possibility that all the families of the village were involved. Was I really mirror so deeply in the situation, mired so deeply in the situation, that I had no choice but to try and carry on as usual? Wouldn't it be safest just to hole myself up in my house? But the moment I abandoned my regular routine, everybody around me would abandon theirs as well. That was too horrifying of a thought. I recalled the tales Uishan told me of when Hirozama was still called Onigafuchi. A frightening tale of an entire village of demons hunting their prey, surrounding them and eating them alive. One must not interfere with the demons. One must pretend not to see it. The enemy were numerous, all the village family. Okay, kind of come to this conclusion a little faster, here, buddy. The villagers, with their unwavering faith in the curse, would not do anything to help. But you haven't talked to any of the villagers. You've only talked to the policeman. The strong sudden flash of sunshine made me slightly dizzy. I had no idea what was going on anymore. When I suspected it was the work of a man, I would catch a glimpse of Oshiro-sama's curse. When I suspected it was Oshiro-sama's curse, someone would poke their head out. What was the coincidence? What was the intentional? Was it intentional? Who was my enemy? Who was just a bystander? No, what I really truly wanted to know was to, what no, did I end up with the proverbial bull I painted on my bulls I painted on my back. Eventually, an answer in a form I couldn't understand will appear. I don't care what will happen, uh, because until then, I cannot die. That alone fueled my resolve to fight and will to keep going. Gonna fight, gonna win, gonna, bam, 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 gonna murder me with a needle in my moochie. 
I remembered seeing the metal bat uh, in the gym storage shed. There was a padlock on the door barring my entrance. At the very least, I wanted to get my hands on it before everyone else arrived at school. I circled around the school grounds impatiently. But all I could find were things like pieces of lumber, nothing that I could bring into the classroom easily. Then I had an epiphany. I shouldn't search inside the classroom. If it was something in the classroom to begin with, then there wouldn't be a problem. I could tell that everyone's indoor shoes were still in their lockers. Good thing I came early. Nobody else was here yet. I, want, I wondered, what could I find in the classroom? I didn't think I could find an, find an especially effective weapon like a bat, but I couldn't be helped at this point. Until the gym storage shed was open, I needed to find a substitute. A lingering hint of naivety whispered that there was no way I'd be attacked at school. But such soft ideas was, would no longer protect me. To think that they were slowly making their way into parts of my life that I had once thought impenetrable. In the worst case, my own house might not be safe anymore. That was an incredib incredibly frightening thought. But I believe that not considering the worst case scenario would have been even more frightening. Anyways, I will survive. So long as I lived, then I will definitely be able to escape this labyrinth of nonsense. Definitely. Absolutely. Positively. My exploration of the classroom came to an impasse. That much was to be expected. There was no way there could be anything that could be a weapon in the classroom. In case of emergency, there was probably nothing I could do but swing my own chair around. That's a decent weapon. Used for personal storage. Okay, oh, a gaze landed on the lockers that had come, uh, had come to be used for personal storage. The locker that Mune used to store her pile of games was among them. There was one for each person in the class, all lined up. Of course, there was one for me as well. Oh yeah, there was supposed to still be a track suit in my locker. So, seeing me covered in mud would be strange. I would go change, I would go change later, but first I needed a weapon. If one of my classmates came it came came oh, came it would be hard to rummage through all the lockers. I swiftly began opening the lockers one by one. They were mostly just filled with things like gym clothes, personal items and umbrellas. An umbrella. If I couldn't find anything better then this would have to do. Oh, have you ever seen the anime another? Uh, don't want to use the umbrella. <laughs> Especially if it's a pointed tip one. I was about to give up on finding anything decent when I opened a locker that held exactly what I wanted. An SMG! It was without a doubt a metal bat. It was well worn and pretty beaten up, but there was no doubt it was usable. In the locker that reeked of mold, there was also hung a baseball uniform. It was probably the locker of a student in a peewee league or something like that. If that was the case, then he'd probably ask for it back. At that time, I couldn't hear the voices of- I could hear the children- the sound of children scuffling their way noisily in from the hallway. Amongst them, I could make out Rika-chan and Satoka. Good morning! Oh! <gasps> this freaking Smash Bro Insta <laughs> sends her flying. Good morning! Game! My, my, you're quite early this morning, Kichan san. I nonchalantly hid the bat I was holding behind my back. What? What is with your outfit? You're covered in mud! Yeah, I had a little incident. I'm going to change now, so cut me some slack. With that, I began taking off my clothes and began to blow as I expected her to. Change in front of a lady! Change in front of a lady? Have you no tact at all? I would think that a lady staring at someone who was changing would be the one lacking the act. There's no changing room for the boy, so just deal with it. As to feigned disgust, she went into the hall, still blushing. Conversely, Rika-chan continued to stare at me, preparing to change. Rika-chan is a lady as well, then I don't think it would be appropriate for you to be watching. I'm not a lady, so it's- Ah, oh, you creep. Alright, time to use the bat. You <laughs> did. Lovely pouted and looked at me with upturned eyes. Then starting now, you're a lady. Congratulations. You just bet. I bestow upon you the rank of lady. Milady. 
If I'm a lady, then I suppose I must. Gucci appeared to be satisfied with being considered a lady, made her way to join Satoko in the hallway. Just as, as I breathed a sigh of relief, Rika-chan stopped suddenly and turned back towards me. Are you going to start playing baseball? Rika-chan had noticed the bat. Oh yeah, just, you know, I was feeling a bit out of shape, so I thought I'd try practicing my swing. I thought it's one. I thought it's wonderful you're taking care of your health. She was talking like an old lady, despite her appearance. After saying that, Rika-chan started to leave again but stop to look back at me once more. Please don't lose that bat. It seems she's already knew I took it out of someone's locker. There was no one's name on the locker door. I don't know whose bat it was, but it would be borrowing it until they complained. That's also known as stealing. I'm now a criminal too. Uh, it wouldn't be for long, just until the gem storage shed was opened. After quickly changing into the tracksuit, I checked the time. I still had plenty of time before class began because I came so early. I took the bat in one hand and went out to the schoolyard uh, that was, of course, to practice my swing. I needed to make it known I would always have a bat on me so I could practice my swing. At some point, the sunlight had become even stronger while I was doing my swing. Disregarding my classmates as they made their way to school, I took my position in the shadows of the school building, practicing my swing. I wasn't the academic... the academic type, and I wasn't much of the athlete, athlete either. I might get called muscle pain if I get suddenly I might get muscle pain if I just suddenly started swinging. Uh, I should at least start out with some warm-up swings. I doubt anyone would think I was doing something out of the ordinary, which was to the exact opposite of an actual mental state. I gripped the bat and swung lightly. That was by no means light. The, the weight would make it a reliable weapon when I needed it to be. Of course, I could only pray that the moment I needed to use this as a weapon would never come. Just carrying it around could deter attacks against me. At least that's what I hoped. Huh? Kishan? What, what are you doing? Being bombarded with such a hysterical voice, I jumped. Oh, Kishan. Are you on the baseball team? Baseball team? The baseball team, the baseball team? It was Rina and Mion. I was surprised to hear you went off ahead. What are you doing, Kichan? Can't you tell by looking? I'm practicing my swing for the championship. Uh, you can say it's part of my diet if you want. Diet, Kichan, are you really that fat? <laughs> but you didn't know I actually have a beer belly. It's Pup and Jiggles. Well, Jiggles, Rina, you don't have to imagine something weird like that. <laughs> Just from Rina from imagining something that vulgar. I ruffled her hair messily. Stop. <laughs> well then, hope you make it to your regionals at least. Never made it to regionals, Jack. I'm sad about that. Oh, it's too good. Too good. That's why. This old man will cheer you on. Regional speaking, it seems that Osh Oshima's high is pretty strong. They say their Southpaw Kamedakun is amazing. Good luck! Seems they've made me out as some kind of local prodigy, but oh well. Well, if I really did make it to the championship, it would be a cinch. After all, I'd be the pitcher and catcher. I'd pitch the ball, then run past that ball I just threw, and change over to being the catcher in a burst of super incredible explosive speed. <laughs> I left dryly at the ludicrous image. Coming back to my senses, I smashed the bat against the ground. Darn it, what am I laughing at? Okay, I'll, I'll, I pounded the ground over and over. With each impact, the reverberation traveling through- Oh, that is like the- Don't do that. Uh, don't do that to equipment. If they make me smile like that, I'll- I'll- ugh. Don't allow anyone close to me. Don't trust anyone, no matter how many times I tell myself that. If they made me smile like that, I'll- Ugh. I already knew quite well that there were demons dwelling in my smiling friends. But I just couldn't believe it. Did that kind of split personality really exist? Like how Rita confessed to the doctor, were they simply being possessed by Shirosama? In other words, did a supernatural being like Shirosama really exist, and was it possessing everybody to try and kill me? Yeah, that would be wonderful. <laughs> if only everyone were actually my friends all along, and eventually, and everything was all just Shirosama's fault. Don't fool, Kijo member, come on now. I yelled out, drawing out all the power from the pit of my stomach, and raised the bat finally into the air. 
Stop being so soft! And I just like beat the air as I screamed out with my might. I beat the metal bat into the ground over and over. With every impact, my weakness was being beaten down. You can smash. Forget. Smash. Don't be soft. Smash. Smash. Know your enemy. Smash. Smash. Like heck, I'd let them kill me. My shoulder heaving up and down from ragged breath. I heard the first bell ring just as I calmed down. Oh, I'm hating. Uh, oh no, not the. You, you bet. You're bending it. You're bending the bat. I know it's dented already, but like. Uh, stop mistreating the equipment. I gasped with a sudden realization that was the final bell. As I felt the tension drain from me, I let out a deep breath. My mind was in a muddle state for su for the much of the entire day. I couldn't feel like I was awake, but it didn't feel like I was asleep either. I couldn't say it felt especially comfortable, but I felt a kind of relief. The, s the sensity of the school part of my daily life had yet to be violated. How long would I have to keep on living like this? I could only grit my teeth and bear with it, as this living heck, slow hell, slowly gnawed away at me. Yee-chan kun Come on, it's club time, club time. Senorina's voice brought me back to my senses. Come on, come on, stop spacing out. Bring your desk, your desk! Everyone was moving their desks together as usual. And that's right, it was happy fun club time. But I had no intention of taking part. I haphazardly stuffed the contents of my desk into my bag as I prepared to go home. It was a weak-handed gesture to avoid having to actually say, I'll be going home now. What's this, Kichan? You're planning on going home right away again? Rian's sounding quite disappointed. I'm just not in the mood. Could you just let me be for a while? The tone of the words that spilled from my mouth matched Mirian's dis disapproving glare. Uh, your whole goal was to act normal. You ain't acting normal. It felt like the air in the room had dried out. Sugo looked like she was about to say something, but perhaps dis dissuaded by the mood, she swallowed her words and stayed silent. Nobody said a thing. I took that to mean that I could leave if I wanted. With the collective gaze of the four of them, like the tiny pins used to mount an insect and display, held me in place. Rina was the one who cut through the heavy mood. You just you didn't like playing with the girls, I guess. <laughs> you said it in such a mellow, uh, mellow, melancholy tone that I sent a wave of pain racing through my heart. If this pain was going to kill me, I wanted it to do to be the soft part of me that could still feel pain. I tore my chest finally, tearing out the pins that held me in place. That's not it at all. I'd only be hurting myself by saying anything more, so I swallowed my words. Turning things off there, I turned away and exited the classroom. They didn't speak a word to me as I left. Oof. Not acting normal. You're blowing your cover. It was a long, dull trip back home, but I didn't lose focus. I firmly squeezed the grip of the bat, which was already soggy from sweat. Realizing that, I wiped it down with my sleeve. It was something... If something were to happen, I wouldn't want it to be slippery. Since this morning, I'd become especially sensitive to the presence of cars. Even while walking, my ears pricked up and sought out threatening sounds and presence that could be closing in. That was why I could hear it. Without a doubt, there was footsteps. Those footsteps had matched up perfectly with mine for a while now. What I could sense, it was just one person. But I had no intention of being careless. They intend to follow me like the, that car this morning until we were, we were in a good location to assault me. And it wasn't a good idea to keep walking like this. I stopped walking and looked back. The wooded path credited with trees responded with silence as if there was nobody there to begin with. But I wouldn't be fooled. I was certain footsteps were following me. And just as I stopped, the footstep stops as well. Meaning that person following me wanted to keep their distance. That was without a doubt. Without a question, proof that I was their target. I held my breath, waiting for the presence to panic and start moving again. The trees rustled with the sound of the wind. And Higurashi also joined in the dis... dis... disant chorus, trying to throw me... throw my focus into disarray. Had five minutes passed, or had it been like this for a whole thirty minutes? It was so hard to breathe that I might have suffocated. It seemed I would be the first one to panic. Without a doubt, he was lurking in the shade of that tree, with faded breath. Then I'd make the first move. I fixed the grip on the bat. I raised it up to my shoulder, 
be ready to swing in any time. Hey, I know you're there. With all my might, I screamed at whoever was hiding in the shade of the trees. But the presence in the shade didn't budge. Until the moment I found them, they had no intention of revealing themselves. I know already, I know you're there. I screamed out angrily at them again, but even still, they didn't move at all. Then I'll go over there myself. With all dual vigilance, I approached step by step. Stepping into the tree shadows, I saw a human figure there. The figure was curled up like a small animal. Rena, When she realized I had found her, her expression softened. She seemed apologetic, but wasn't going to speak a word. Did you have some business with me? I wouldn't accept that silence screamed the question out. I wouldn't accept that silence and screamed the question out. Oh, don't yell at her. No, not really, it's just, um... Rena was in a panic with tears welling up in her eyes. This was obvious that she had been following. What about the club? Since you're not, I'm not. That sh shouldn't matter. Don't mind me. Just play. But I'm just worried about you. Thinking about how I've been acting up until now, it wasn't hard to imagine that my behavior could have been perceived as strange. Serena was concerned as a quick glance, that's how it would seem. But I wasn't going to let my guard down that easily. Even if that was really the case, she still wouldn't have to do something to try to tail me. She would have called out to me when I was leaving and gone out right with me. But Rena didn't do that. She kept her distance from me and matched my walking. On top of that, she matched the sound of her footsteps and deeply tried to hide her presence from me. Then, after she realized I noticed she was there, she held her breath as she tried hiding from me. She wore a timid expression that would force one to take pity on her. Without a doubt, she was tailing. Stop following me. <laughs> oh. Still glaring at Rena, I continued walking onward. And I'd walked for a bit, she ignored my command and began walking again. So I yelled at her more. I told you not to follow me. Yeah, but my house is the same direction. Then walk ahead of me. I'll start walking once I can't see you anymore. I moved out of the way and waved my bat violently to urge her forward. I'd, I'd like to go home to bed with you. Oh, no. Curse the eyes of women. Making pitiful expressions, she meekly squeaked out the words in a voice that she knew would cut into my heart. My heart has been removed. Walks out of react room, covers in soot and smoke coming out of the room. Oh, hey, Dan. <laughs> Something happened in Space Engineers? Don't mind me just yelling at an anime girl. <laughs> I knew it was a lie. If you want, how you, how you doing, Epic? If you wanted to go home together, then you should have called out to me. Then you're just blurting out random lies. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It seemed that there was seething anger within me was written all over my face. Even without me saying. Looks at door. Let's just say I've been working on, on Derpy. <laughs> i working on something special. Is it for the battle? I still need to make some, a few adjustments to my ship. Just to make it a little... A little... Pristine. Two things. Uh, I've got, uh, there's, there's two modifications I'm going to make to my, uh, ship. That, according to, so I asked it on the Discord if you could use merge blocks, and it sounded like you can. So I do, I do have a plan. I have a scheme. But we shall see. <clears throat> Even without me saying saying anything, Rena had understood that I was feeling feeling inside. I really needed to redesign, build a new ship sometime. I love giant ships, and I haven't built a decently huge one in a long time. Last one I did was the fleet carrier. Maybe I should build another mech. I haven't built a mech for years. If you get in, if you get it, then go. I swung the bat, urging her again to walk on. Rena looked back and forth between me and the bat and started walking hesitantly and stopping. Go on then, hurry! I I'm going! So please, stop with the bat. It it's scary. Rena guarded herself while pointing at me holding the bat. You may have realized that I wasn't planning on using this bat for baseball. I lowered the bat, still guardedly opening the way for her. Go. There's no problem now, is there? Nothing else she could protest. 
pass by me timidly so as to not set me off. As I watched her pass by, she stopped completely after having barely moved at all. Hey, don't stop. Then a powerful gust blew past us, barraging me with pace with dust. Pocket sand! The dust got into my eyes and clouded my vision. While rubbing my eyes with my left hand, I swung blindly with the bat in my right, protecting the small opening I had presented. Serena didn't even try to attack during that opening. Attack me? No, she hadn't budged an inch. I could tell from the sound of her fluttering skirt in the wind. As her skirt settled, so did the silence. At that moment, the voice inside of me immediately warned me of impending danger. Uh, one thing is mainly a meme thing, the other is to fight. Ah. Uh, what? Are you gonna show off the meme thing at the battle too, or is this something else? Well, you're not gonna use it though, because you said you're gonna use something for the other battle. Are you gonna show it off at the battle? <laughs> I'm kinda curious now. The smell of the air had changed. Without me realizing it, the air around me suddenly felt like a calamity was about to befall me. Yeah, wanna know what it is? Sure. I love a good, like, joke ship. Like the railgun I built with, uh, the, the railgun in, see, uh, Colorado and I built a railgun that was just, it was just a railgun with, like, a cockpit and, like, enough engines to move it and a giant reactor. <laughs> it's like, it was just bare bones what you needed to make a ship entirely out of a railgun. <laughs> Yeah, ever heard of the, the Gatling railgun? <laughs> no, but now I'm very curious. Is it basically where you just pile up a bunch of just Gatlings close to together and they just shred through everything? It was like the air had suddenly become invisibly concrete, like Rina and I were locked in space. Rina didn't move an inch. Also, unable to move, I stared at her back. Rina was the first to break the silence. Instantly, she altered her stance. I felt like I had just witnessed her shift from Rina into the other person who looks like Rina. Well, I stuck it on the front of Derpy. Nice. But the voice was one I knew well, which filled me with a kind of bewildering pity. Fearlessly, I felt relief upon hearing that pitiful voice. Uh, um, well, excuse me, but can I ask you something? Too shy to even turn around, Rina squeezed her voice out desperately as she trembled. What? Uh, well, well, why do you have a bat, I wonder, I wonder? The question Rina asked was by no means unexpected. I can carry whatever I want, but you didn't have one up until today. But why so suddenly? It's all right if I decide to do something suddenly, isn't it? Is it strange that I have a bat? Because you're not the kind of person to play baseball. It's, it's weird. I couldn't tell what kind of answer she was looking for, and I was getting tired of answering her. I instantly got the urge to play baseball. That's so weird. It's weird. She answered instantly, and that annoyed me slightly. I just suddenly wanted to play baseball, and I wanted to practice my swing, so I'm carrying around a bat. What's strange about that? That rhymed. Good job, Kichan. <laughs> strange. Weird. Definitely. Why was Kichan Kun also? Your ramblings are annoying me, so is there strange for me to have an interest in sports? I tried to sound a bit more threatening to the end of the conversation. Until my suspicion about Rina was cleared, I had no obligation to answer her question. I I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I don't get so ang don't get so angry. Rena still didn't turn around and spat out words of apology when I was next. Just one last thing. Tell me one last thing. I don't feel like talking anymore. Hurry up and go. I yelled loudly at her, causing her to flinch like she had been struck. Seeing her in such a pathetic state caused my heart to ache sorely. Even though she was afraid, she stubbornly kept herself from moving. Before I was able to threaten her again, Rina asked her final question. But why is that the bat the same same too? What did she mean by the bat was the same? No idea what she was talking what she was talking about. What are you saying? I mean why why is even the bat the same? I don't understand what you mean at all. Say it clearly. Even still, Rina didn't turn around. After inhaling deeply, she screamed, I mean, why is it even, why even the bat the same as Satoshi Shikan? Satoshi being, huh? Upon hearing that name out of the blue, I became dumbfounded by a brief moment. By Satoshi, does she mean the student who transferred out last year? No, that couldn't be. Rina had tried to cover it up by saying he transferred, but Oshina-san told me quietly, clearly, that he was missing. 
He was the student who sat on my seat up until last year. He was believed to have been demoned away by the Oshirosama's curse. I don't... I didn't know the details about this disappearance. The aunt he lived with was killed the night of the Watongashi by a drug addict, and not long after that he, he vanished and was now missing. That Satoshi and I were... What? My, maze, my gaze fell to the bat in my hand. Could it be... Satoshi Hoju. It was a bit different to see, but there... But there... What? But that was what was written on the white tape at the end of the back. How did you not read this when you picked this up? I see. I see. So this was Satoshi's bat. Uh, oh, this was Satoshi's bat. Since nobody was using it, I borrowed it. That's not a problem, is it? No, th that's not it. Uh, the way Rina said that made it seem like this bat was something that should never be touched. Like it was some sort of offering as a shrine or a mentor to the deceit. I could only stand there perplexed and unable to respond. Rina continued speaking without waiting for a reply. Why is it? Why is it that you're doing the exact same thing Sakoshi did when it happened to him? Oh no. Rina was talking about was talking about more than just the bat belonging to Satoshi. It was the same with Satoshi kun. He joined the baseball team, but he didn't really like baseball. What does that have to do with me? Satoshi kun also suddenly started walking around with a bat one day. He joined a team he wasn't the type to play sports. What about it? I closed my mouth before I could say that out loud. Listening carefully, Kishin. Ooh, so he's following a pattern. Rina is trying to tell us something important. The Toshi Kun also one day came to school all by himself all of a sudden, just like Kichun Kun. Then one day he suddenly started practicing his swing, just like Kichun Kun. Kichun Kun. Then one day he suddenly began carrying the bat around with him, just like Kichun Kun. Then one day he suddenly. <laughs> Then one day he suddenly what? Rina had swallowed her word. Rina's su sudden silence brought a hush back to the surrounding area. It was then I could finally digest the content of the entire conversation. She was saying my chain of actions was exactly the same as Satoshi. What was the meaning of this? Up until just now, I'd forgotten all about Satoshi. I had never paid much thought to him in the first place. Not only that, I didn't even know anything of what he's done. My actions today should have been my own creation after all the planning I had done, but they had been the exact same as Satoshi's? It's Satoshi. No, more importantly, if both Satoshi and I acted the same way, then there was a really good possibility that what happened after would be the same. Rina, that day, what happened to Satoshi? Rina knew. She knew what became of Satoshi. No, no, forget about what happened to a guy in the past. Rina knew what was going to happen to me. Answer me, Rina. Satoshi, what happened to him? With that, I grabbed Rina's shoulder violently and forcefully turned her around to face me. That was a mistake. As I faced her, I felt a jolt travel through my entire body. I told you, Ichiyankun. It was that person that I didn't know. At least it definitely wasn't the Rina Ryugi I had been talking to up until now. The voice just didn't have a trace of the trembling of emotion. Well, I've planned be- I plan being humor to the battle because it looks stupid. <laughs> Alright, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing it. I can't wait to see it. The voice just now didn't have a trace of the trembling or emotion that it had before. I got one joke ship that I completely made. It's just a giant, like, middle finger <laughs> that flies around and shoots missiles out the ball. Uh, maybe I'll shoot- maybe I'll just do a battle in that one. I'll just flick people with the tip of the finger. <laughs> The amount of regret I felt for turning her around so carelessly was surpassed. A gaze that pierced like a cold needle, a smile on her face that invoked an image of having been carved out, of, out by a knife. Chills went down my spine, my mind froze under a layer of rhyme. Both of her eyes pierced through mine, leaving me unable to look away. As if to remind me of the fear from the time before Rina brought her face close to mine, so close that I could feel her breath. Just... <laughs> Her face had filled my entire field of vision. Then her sharply shaped, uh, shaped lips grew even sharper, like the curve of a crescent moon that grinned. I told you, Kichang kun After a short pause, she repeated the same words again. Satoshi, you see, transferred out. Transferred, meaning what? 
What Rena meant must have been some new definition of transfer that I was previously not aware of. Transfer to the next life. My throat and lips dried up. I couldn't even acknowledge what I had just heard. All I could do was swallow down my not my own saliva. It would seem that Rena saw that at as a nod. She pulled her gaze back and spryly stepped back two three paces. As she did, my legs gave out and I fell to my knees pathetically. Rena, uh, Rena and me, Rena and me on my knees underneath her emotionless smile. That had to be a very odd sight indeed. Seeing me in that pathetic state, she neither scoffed at me nor held out her hand. But I could neither stand nor escape with each gaze shooting through my eyes. There was an undoubtedly a mental a metal bat in my hand, but right now it was useless to me. I, f I was like a fly caught in her web. Heavy sweat headed all around my body. I could feel it dripping from my skin. But you don't, but you won't, will you? Ki Jiang Kun. Rina finally released it from that cage time after what felt like an eternity. But her question was missing something important, and it was incredibly vague. Once again, I swallowed hard, urging her on. Do what? What did she not want me to do? Transfer. That well, seems easy enough. Yeah, just... That's a decent screenshot. Probably use that. Toshi and I had what? All my well-planned actions throughout the day turned out to have been nothing more than a reenactment of what Satoshi had done. Satoshi had he really been in the same situation as I am now. The friends he had gotten along with had changed suddenly and for no reason, at least none that I had noticed, planned to kill him. Then fearing for his life as I am, he got a bat to protect himself and carried it around every day to practice his swing. And then one day suddenly, he... Transferred. <laughs> I guess that I didn't even read it. That's funny. My blood went cold, causing a prickling sensation to course through my veins. Sh starting near my heart, it radiated outwards from the top of my heart head to the soles of my feet, chilling every part of me without re recurrence. What did she mean by transfer? What did she mean by transfer? Was Shatashi still wherever he transferred to? Like the ground? Probably. Was he the only one who who would be able to understand me? Would he be the able to tell me why it all ended up like this? More importantly, where did he transfer to? What did she mean by transfer? What did she mean by transfer? I need more water. Ooh. Ah, that's better. Right. Before I knew it, I was in my front door. The frigid knob was hard to turn. Was nobody home? It wasn't the odd of an it wasn't that odd of an occurrence. I reached into my pocket and pulled out the single key attached to my fur sealed keychain. And the Amazon packages are still there. We are a dysfunctional family. I stepped into my in the entryway just as I was about to take off my shoes. A chill ran down my spine. Someone had entered right behind me. Like a classmate messing around, standing right up against my back. <laughs> You're kidding, right? It had to be my imagination. Logically speaking, it was impossible for someone to be able to hide their presence within my personal space all the way through the door. But there was an undoubtedly someone behind me. Hey now, hey now, Kichan. How did you know they are there, even though they are behind you? Because I could hear the sound of flowing hair. There's no other reason I'd hear that sound. That was the presence, as I could hear the sound of them blinking. There's no way you could hear that. Actually, you ever have like your eye squeak? If enough moisture gets into one point and you blink, it'll actually go like a... I can't make the noise because it's like... I don't know, something. Maybe my eyes just shouldn't be making sounds. It was just my imagination and common sense. Oh, it was most... Mostly instinct than anything else that was warning me of that of that presence commonly sensed was telling me that it was just my imagination. It was just my imagination. There was nobody behind me. I, I began to erase the mental image of an eerie figure standing behind me. Hmm, at the same time, I asked myself if there was nobody, then what was I feeling? As an uncomfortable sensation crawled up my spine. 
That's when you just like move your hand behind you and just make it look casual like you're going to scratch your back, but you go wide, so you can like karate chop someone's neck behind you, but if no one's there, it just looks like you did a strong twist of your arm to just, you know, scratch that shoulder blade. You, gotta, you don't look suspicious, you just, you know, being careful, doing your stretches. Actually, wouldn't it be better if there was somebody there? If there was nobody there, when you turned around, would you be able to accept that? Again, like, this guy goes through a full diagnosis monologue every time he says something. I am an evil genius. <laughs> oh, I look forward to it. I want to see what you've done. Wouldn't it be better if there was somebody there? If there was nobody uh, there when you, when you turned around, would you be able to accept that? I'll be able to answer all those questions just by looking behind me. But I didn't have enough courage to even do simple tasks. Oh, right. I could try speaking to them. The person behind me might answer me. It was random thought. I didn't care how I went about it just so long as I didn't have to turn around. If I had calmed down and thought about it, I would have known that that wouldn't have solved anything. Who is it? I spoke in such a hoarse, broken voice that I couldn't believe it was my own. Who is it? <laughs> Be a man, Keyshawn. Turn around and slap that fool. I could almost feel them contemplating their response. I felt that there's no way I should be able to do that. Calm down, Kitchen. It's all in your head. At the time I was certain I heard it. As if hesitantly trying to answer my inquiry, I was certain I could hear the sound of somebody inhaling. I heard it. I heard it. I heard it clearly. It was a girl. A young girl. I didn't know who, but a tiny speck of courage in me, who, however reckless it was, inspired a primal yet fitting solution to the current predicament. Predicament. A scream. All the force of my body released from my lungs and through my throat, seizing all thought process in my head. Suppressing all my thoughts and emotions, I began to collapse like a house of cards, somehow managing to twist my body and look back as I did so. It was definitely there, right there. Somebody was there. Until the moment I turned around, until I brought an area behind me into my field of vision, they were definitely there. Falling face up, my eyes traced remnants of the presence of suspect in the empty space. It couldn't be. They were invisible. They looked like they were there. They were actually still standing there? As I screamed, all of the emotion I was holding back burst free in a violent wave. However, I was decidedly calm as my emotional dam collapsed. The turbulent wave of pent-up emotion was skillfully diverted into a torrent of exaggeration, aggravate, aggression. That emotion was definitely required to extric extricate myself from the bizarre situation happening right in front of me. In my state of heightened lud ludicrousy, I entrusted my body to the fury. The mental bat held firm in my right hand as if drawn there by a magnet. A mid-level sweep would be the hardest attack to dodge. I remember reading something like that from a book about swordsmanship or something. Mid-level sweep. Yes, yeah, so you in the hallway. Are you seeing this? You're gonna hit your Amazon deliveries first, buddy. Wah! I brandished my will to fight. The after image of that emulation of the metal flashed as it swung from left to right, beating against the entryway. The bat slammed into the right wall, the tip rebounding violently. Just very calmly, I transferred the force of the rebound into a sweep to the left. Dude, you're breaking the house! The door was a shoe-covered board, was split into pieces. Those two swings swifted through empty space, but they seemed to have a great psychological impact on the enemy. I could feel the panic in prison. If, if they have that many means, they ruling money, darn. <laughs> Yeah, that many. I mean, look at all these Amazon packages. They constantly just have these Amazon packages there. And I, can, I could feel the panic em emulating from the space. The attack wasn't the only thing required. I extracted the bat. Exactly. Maybe this is all a ploy, my secret plan. If I buy enough Amazon boxes, I can barricade myself in this house. They'll never find me. They'll never get me. They can't hurt me if they can't find me. I am safe. Amazon is my guiding. It's my guiding grace. <laughs> and Jeff Bezos we trust. Uh, okay. uh, Kichan's losing it. He's losing here right now. Screamed as I spun my entire body around in a large arc. 
Wog! I scream as an orc from Warhammer 40k. My scream shook the air and burned my furious swings with even more destructive power. Oh, I am like breaking my house. Crack! Without mercy to the door restraint. My flying strike with certain fatal force behind it shattered the top of the cupboard. None of my attacks struck the enemy. But my ferocity had certainly seemed to impact them. Who are you trying to attack? You just, they're invisible. It makes sense. No, buddy, no. <laughs> Calm yourself. Breathing heavily, my entire body soaked in sweat, the invisible enemy there, but not there dis dispersed. When I was certain that the enemy had retreated, I locked the front of the door and latched the chain. No way had it only feigned retreat and was now inside my house. Once again, I channeled my aggression and searched the house for the presence, but it was gone. I had succeeded in fending it off. At that moment, the tension drained from my body, and I let out a deep sigh of relief. All of the emotions I had been holding back uh, chaotically merged together and began to flood out. Uh, a hodgepodge of fear accompanied... Uh, accomplishment and disbelief all mixed together and began to flow through my body. Unable to deal with each individual feeling, I beat them all back with the strongest exhaustion. Strongest exhaustion. Even in this moment, I remained composed. You were not composed at all, buddy. You were completely off the hinges. After checking that all doors throughout the house were locked, I went up to my room on the second floor and closed the curtains. I straightened my back and tilted my head back a little. After clearing my mind of all my idle thoughts, I managed to calm down even more. What was that at the front door? There was definitely something there. Thinking about it, maybe it was just an apprehension. I have driven up in my confused state, but I really didn't think that was the case. Calm down, Kichon Mabara. Compose yourself. But no matter how calmly I thought about it, what just happened wasn't a figment of my imagination. It was obviously a supernatural phenomenon, and without a doubt, something was behind me. It wasn't some sort of illusion I saw amidst my confusion and disorientation. Proof? I had just had one piece. When I asked who, they inhaled as if they were about to answer. That sound had clearly reached my ears. The situation I was in right now was still unclear. Either I had been possessed by the supernatural phenomenon known as Urishima Sama's curse, or this was a ruse by the villagers who believed in it and were intimidating it. Imitating it. Either way, their motives were unclear. The roundabout way it had been done was also still a mystery. If it was perpetrated by humans, that would mean admitting that it was Rina and the rest of them doing it, but it would be solvable. Uisha-san and the rest of the police would surely arrest my enemy. But if it was manifestation of Urasama's curse, I wondered what would happen. Urasama very clearly declared that curses didn't exist. Ushin, sorry not Urasama, Ushin. At that time, those words were pretty dependable, but as things were now, with the rising possibility that the perpetrators were not human, he suddenly seemed quite unreliable. If I told Uishi-san this would be the work of Oshiro-san's curse, what would happen? I couldn't imagine his reaction, but it would go without question. The void would expand rapidly between myself and Uishi-san. With me having so few allies to begin with, and not being able to, con to confidently declare whether or not this was a curse or not, there w was no merit to doing that. I'd, I'd better keep the facts of what just happened at the doorway to myself. It would be better if I didn't add what happened here to the memo behind the clock. There was still the ever so slight possibility that I was actually confused when I thought I was composed and I was just going berserk in the entryway. How wonderful would, would that be if that was really what happened? I would be able to refute Oshiro-sama's curse but if I denied Oshiro-sama's curse, then that would mean admitting that Rina and the rest were the perpetrators. Or, hear me out here, buddy. <laughs> we're all good. Everything's fine, alright? Just stop breaking the tables and bending bats. I, I guess I like, I don't know when I got this in my life, but people breaking stuff irritates me so much. I, it's just like, no, you're breaking perfectly good things, you're bending the bat by hitting it to the ground, you're breaking good cupboards! You know how hard good tubboard, cupboards are to find. Actually, it's probably because... Uh, it's probably because, I like, all my brothers always broke my stuff, so I just became very protective of everything I own. Like, every plastic sword, plastic shield, gun, would eventually be broken. And so I learned how to hide stuff, I learned how to like keep things safe. 
So yeah, I guess I think maybe that is where this comes from in me, where it's just like, uh, just stop, stop breaking stuff, please. And like, like even now, like, like even when it's trash, I have trouble breaking stuff because it's just like, ah, uh, it's still, I can use it somehow. That's like, that's probably how I got into DIY stuff. But you'd be surprised how many cool stuff you can find in trash. I actually basically dumpster dived when I was a landscaper. I found a gas powered scooter, uh, two toolboxes, an entirely working TV. Um, I got a giant flat screen TV. That one, it worked, but didn't work. I, um, it, like, it turned on, but the backlights were out. So like, if you held a flashlight to it, you could see the picture. Um, but I didn't know how to fix that. Uh, so I tore it apart and I built a Mandalorian suit out of it. <laughs> So even though I was like, I just have the sense of like, don't break good stuff, or else if it does break, reuse it somewhere else. Like, resources, reuse. Stop, stop breaking doors. <laughs> and my, my Keychan is now the criminal of this mine, our criminal in this story. Yeah, don't, don't break stuff again. Especially if you don't have to. If I said that Rina and the rest were at the perpetrators of Shiva's Curse. Okay, back to the story. Sorry for my tangent. By denying both of those, I would be admitting that I myself am losing it. Three options from which I wouldn't choose became trilemma of sorts. A trilemma. Trilemma of sorts. They mixed together and formed a whirlpool in my mind, making my head spin. Once again, I straightened myself and leaned my head back slightly. Cool my. Where's my phone? Because I just remember, I had like an important X to my dad. So I, I filled out my lease again, my renewal lease for my apartment. And he was asking, he was like, oh, like I just got this, so are you planning to stay? I was like, yeah, like I actually really like where I moved to. And he's my uh, guarantor, guarantor, so he needs to sign it. Calm down, Kichan. Accept what has actually happened as a reality. Stop thinking of anything more than that. I couldn't help but think of it. Because that's your consciousness speaking. <laughs> Listen to it. You're breaking cupboards now. You're not thinking straight. It would be. If it turned out I was delirious and everything up until now was a figment of my imagination. Oishiya-sama's curse wouldn't exist and I would still be best, bestie, best, bestest buddies with Rina and the rest. I would have to be crazy. That was the first time in my life I'd ever wished for such a thing. Ooh. Well, who could that be? The phone rang noisily downstairs. Generally, there were no calls for me, so I never really answered the phone much, but since my parents weren't here, that's a relief or you'd begin a licking from your dad for bringing all that stuff. I had no choice. I squirmed off the bed and went downstairs. Hello, this is Maribara Residence. Kitchen, this is Mom. I intuitively had a bad feeling about this. Your father is trembling on the floor. He sent someone. He's sending something about someone breaking the family heirloom cupboard. Is everything all right? How are the Amazon packages? It was because I thought she was going to ask me to go out and buy some things, so I took the initiative. What? I don't mind having instant noodles for dinner. There's still a lot of them. The other day we went out as a family and bought a whole case of cup noodles. I wanted to get a bunch of different kinds actually, but they refused since the individual packs were expensive. So the so instead I got a whole case, the mega sized pork bone and ginger flavored ones I liked. My parents don't like strong flavors and I didn't and I didn't touch any of them, so the cupboards were still full of them. So you see, there really isn't a need to go shopping, right? Kichon, I'm not asking you to go shopping. Both mommy and daddy have to go to Tokyo right now because of work. Huh? Right now? This was really abrupt. No, we're already here. We left you. We abandoned you in your time of need. We left this afternoon. It's quite a distance to Tokyo from Hinomizawa. Gunning at full speed down the highway would still take six hours. Dad has a license, but since he doesn't like the highways, they likely took the train. It would have taken longer. I'm thinking you might understand since you heard us speaking last night. But it has to do with uh, Daddy's contract right now. Things aren't going so smoothly. Uh, now that she's mentioned it, uh, mentioned it, I did remember that they talked all that time about how this job prospects weren't looking so good. 
Uh, Daddy is really sensitive about things like this, so if we leave things as they are, it will affect his work. Part of my father's particular fragile artistic personality, his emotions change as easily as the fall sky. You could also just say he couldn't take criticism. <laughs> but, but something like that can be done over the phone. Kichan, this is your father's job, so can you support him a bit, please? Anyway, it's just faster to talk about it in person, so there wouldn't be any misunderstandings. As a son, there was nothing more I could say once they started talking about work. So we'll be back tomorrow night. Kichan, will you be fine on your own? You weren't asking us to bury you with your clock when you died, so we are genuinely concerned about you. It's not like I'll die or anything. <laughs> Kichan, you shouldn't speak so lightly of dying. If there's something troubling you, just talk to us. I, be I believe Mommy will be able to help out. Yesterday, I did bring it bring up if I die rather abruptly, so I suppose they were a little worried. But really, I was more depressed by the fact that nothing would be solved by telling them. I didn't plan on dying. At least, not while I still knew nothing. I would never allow it. There we go. I won't die. I won't. I'll survive even if I have to gnaw my leg off. Yeah, see, see you then, tomorrow morning. <laughs> Make sure to wake up. This kid gives the wrong responses every time. And eat your breakfast. Don't eat your legs when you gnaw them off. We have failed as parents, apparently. Don't forget to take a bath and brush your teeth. Yeah, 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 see ya. The call ended like that. Sometimes my parents went soft, went soft, went off to Tokyo uh, for a business meeting, but Tokyo was far away. They normally did things by, by phone. The times they did go were normally planned out in advance. It never happened this suddenly. I couldn't say that those circumstances didn't feel strange or rather unnatural. Anyway, I only needed to recognize the reality of the situation. That tonight, I was the only one in the house. That, that's when my parents came back from work. I'd be gone. Missing. Vanished. I transferred, as Rena would say. Looking back on the series of events of the previous five years involving the Oshiro-sama's curse, it wouldn't seem that strange at all. Come to think of it, it was getting pretty late. I didn't think it was good that the only light on in the whole house was from my room on the second floor. It was the same as a broadcasting to the enemy that my parents were gone and this was their chance. First I ran to the living room, then flicked on the lights and turned on the TV on to the reassuring volume. Next was the study, I, si I similarly turned on the lights and some music. With this from the outside it would look like my parents were here. Once again I went through the house checking to see if there was anything left unlocked. When I saw the Bernadette and the laundry still hanging out there, I went pale. That was, that was made it too obvious I needed to take it down. I snatched down the laundry haphazardly and erased all traces that my mother wasn't there. It should be fine now. Ah! The dishes! They haven't been done! Ah! The garage! They, they hadn't gone all the way to Tokyo by car, but they had gone by Okinosama Station. The garage was empty, wide open, and in plain sight, this was no good. I panicked and rushed out the back to close the normally open garage door. It should be fine now, as I needed to get the paper. Mom always got the paper. Since they left in the afternoon, the evening paper was still out there. Fool woman, you're gonna get me killed! My presumption was correct. I pulled out everything from the mailbox and dropped it in the entryway. With this, for sure, this time, it should be fine. Come to think of it, leaving the, cup the cupboard busted like that from a little freak out is kind of bad. It's- I still- I'll just say I tripped and fell and the bat I was holding smashed into it. Even so, just leaving it in its current state wasn't good. You bashed the door, you lunatic! You can't explain that one! You fell, what, four times? First time, oh, first time, oh no! Oh gosh! Oh no! Just banging down, taking everything down in the house. Not the priceless family heirlooms! Oh no! Not the priceless china! A little before, Mom got back and scolded me. I remembered that there was a broom and dustpan in the closet. I was going to get get them. The phone rang once again. Hello, this is Marlboro Residence. Everyone's home. Oh, is this Ki Chung Kun? Is your mother around? Ah, oh, she isn't here at the moment. You idiot, Ki Chung Maribor. You fool of a took! You've revealed your secrets. Abandoned ship. Burn the house. Don't reveal that till your parents are gone. You can't follow. You can't follow up. Still, calm down and take care of it. I think she'll be back soon. Like right now, she's walking in right now. Oh yay, that wasn't a good response either. Fool, uh, delinquent, I'm I'm dead. <laughs> now they might say they'll call again. 
but to tell her to call them when she comes back? But that's fine. It wasn't anything important. Well then, sorry for, bo the, for the bother. The scenario I feared didn't play out in listen, listening a sigh of relief. That was a call for fortunate. It was more ways than one. I'd have to deal with more telephone calls coming in from my parents tonight. It was somehow, I was somehow able to deal with the phone call just now, uh, but I couldn't continue to rely on such poor improvisions. I needed to make up a good story to explain that my parents were home but couldn't answer the phone at the moment. They are, they are making me a sibling. <laughs> they, they are currently scootily pooping across the house right now and are currently unavailable. Uh, they can go for upwards of 24 hours. Please do not interrupt them at this time. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, they were remaking the tempera. I couldn't step away right now. That wasn't good enough. They were sick and went to bed because they weren't feeling well. Was that good to be safe enough? I was thinking about it on the way back to my room when the phone rang once again. It was like they were calling because they knew I was going to lie. I didn't want to pick up, but I knew I had to. It was my duty. They'd suspect my parents weren't here. I should have just taken the phone off the hook under their presence. I didn't realize that it was. But since the phone rang, I had to pick it up. I prepared myself and lifted up the receiver. Hello? I stopped announcing this was the Maribury residence. I had no re reason to be kind to someone I didn't know the identity of. So you always be polite. You answer the phone with Moshi Moshi. Alright. But unlike my uncoached vo coach voice, the person on the other side sounded goofy and lighthearted. Hello, my apologies for calling so late. This is Uishi from Okinawa Bookstore. Uishi-san? Is that you, maribura son Good evening. Good to hear you are doing well. Wait, wait, just a moment, please. I grabbed the portable headset and rushed up to my room with it. <laughs> it was the it was the same no matter where I was. It was I was since there was no one else home, but I wanted to be in spot that just felt a bit safer. I threw on my covers and grabbed my airsoft gun when speaking on the phone with Irusan. Sorry for the wait. Uh, how are things? Anything changed since then? Oh, big things! I'm hiding for my life. Since then, when was that exactly? Oh, uh, there was something about the brazen way he talked about that rubbed me the wrong way. The last time I spoke with Uishi-san was two days ago. The day I stayed home from school, I met Oishi-san on the way back from the hospital and we headed into the town for lunch and had a talk. Then after that, Rina and Myun came to check up on me. Whenever I spoke with Uishi-san, they always knew about it. It was like that since the first time I met him. The day phone... Today's phone call may well be found out by them as well. Hello, uh, can you hear me, maribura son Huh? Ah, uh, sorry. Um, what did you say? I asked if anything changed since last time. You know, puberty, because you're, you know, you're a kid and all. There wasn't, you're a growing man. Uh, wasn't there an answer, so I, oh. I asked if anything had changed since last time. There wasn't an answer, so I got a bit worried. Oh, um, not really. The words stopped in my throat. There was a ton of stuff that happened. All of it baffling. What should I talk about? I didn't understand any of it, but I should try asking. If I didn't ask now, I may never have another chance. This night, when my parents weren't home, I had no guarantees I would make it through the night safely after all. Well, Uishi-san, it seems that someone is after me. Really? Really? It could all just be coincidence, but that day I missed school when I was sick, the two of them came to check up on me. Which two? Rina and Myon. They started asking about how I had lunch with you. But next, they left me some moochie and they came to visit, but there was a needle inside. Fortunately, I somehow didn't swallow it. I wonder, could that have just been a threat about the needle? Um, it was just one of those common sewing needles you, know, you see all the time. There was a hole that the thread sh string goes through. Not that much, the needle itself. Uh, that's evidence. It could be used as proof that they threatened you. Where is that needle? That, that's right, that's it! I dropped the receiver and rushed downstairs. When I tossed the mochi, I had overlooked it out of tower. The needle was a valuable piece of evidence. I had certainly thrown the mochi and needed, needed at the wall together. If it was there, then it could be on the living room wall. Well, no, because you bit and you spat it out and you never picked it up. And then the next day, your mother found it and cleaned up. So it's not on the wall, but my prudent mother had cleaned- Okay, there we go. Living the room wall, and there was not a trace of mochi left on it. 
Could it be that it dropped in the gap between the walls and the carpet? I frantically searched by, by running my palm along the carpet, but nothing turned up. I tried moving around the sofa and desk, pulling up the carpet, then flapping it around, but I couldn't find the needle. Did my mom clean up everything without noticing it? It was just two days ago. Well, yeah. You know how many needles I've stepped on in my house? Like, uh, finding a needle inside a house is not strange at all. But it may still be in the trash bin of the kitchen! I rushed into the kitchen, opened up the lid on the pa pail, and poured out the contents. But even at a glance, I couldn't tell that it would be incredibly difficult to find the needle in this pile of trash. I was looking for a needle in a trash stack. I know I'll try running my hand through it. I was a bit gross, but looking for the needle, I felt a small prick. See, if I felt a small prick, I'd be able to find it. It was a pretty tasteless method, but it was the quickest. I held my breath and started striking the pile of trash with my hand. With, uh, with flu about, there was nothing more disgusting than this, where it was the time to be concerned about such details. I continued for a while, but nothing turned up. I watched the search more thoroughly, but I could still, uh, still on the phone. I shouldn't keep or shouldn't have someone waiting for too long. Later, when mom got back, I'd have to ask her if there was a needle. I hastily began scribbling on the note had affixed on the refrigerator with a magnet. Was there a needle? I scrawled the words with red pen. I then dashed back up and stairs where I had been keeping oysters on waiting for far too long. Uh, if you scribble it, uh, no, uh, no, I see. My writer instincts are kicking in. That's a mistake. Don't do that. Hello, how did it go? I couldn't find it. I was really overwhelmed back then, and I see. It would be great if you could find it. Keep it safe. Keep it secret. Keep it safe. That's right. The needle wasn't the only incident. I had to tell him about this morning with the hit and run. Also, Shasan, that isn't all. Actually, this morning, that van was definitely aiming for me. I could say that without question due to the circumstances at the time. Do you see the license plate? I can search for it from here. Darn! I just flipped out yelling at him back then, I, but I didn't look at the plate. What failure on my part with the needle and the plate number. Ooh, I was so focused just protecting myself that I let some of the most important details slip out of my grasp. I punched my pillow annoyed at how worthless I was. I'm sorry, I don't know much more than that. It was a white fan. Nothing to fret about, my Rosan. Anyone would be shaken up after being hit. I guess all of this really isn't a coincidence, is it? Wish this one started to hem and ha over on the other end. Hmm, ah. Uh, I could imagine him folding his arms. Also, oh, Rina is acting strange. How so? What Rina said on the way home today, asking why I was so much like Satoshi's son. Now I could say it with confidence. The Rina knew what happened to Satoshi. She knew there was more to him than him just simply disappearing. Rina knows she knows something regarding what happened to Satoshi, the kid who was demoned away last year. What would that be exactly? Rina said I was the same as Satoshi. She said something to the effect that the way things are going, I'll end up the same fate as Satoshi. Fate, you say? Exactly what kind of fate did she say would befall you? Um, transferring out, she said. Transferring out? Rina said Satoshi transferred out. So given how things are going with me, I'll transfer out too. Rishon let out a stern sigh and then grumbled loudly. Transferred out. Is that what they? Is that what the kids are calling murder these days? <laughs> I think I'm gonna say that from now on, just as a reference to this. Just like whenever I'm like doing a mission, it's like, no, no, I didn't kill them. They simply transfer it on. They transfer it out. Remember, that was probably some sort of threat, or maybe some type of warning. I thought so too. At that point, I started to think, would it be prudish to sum up everything that had happened up until now as the machinations of some human perpetrator? Other than the theory of it being Rina and the others, I was left with Oshira Sama's curse, actually existing as the only other explanation. Of course, I couldn't tell that Oshira Sama, except Rina, a strange behavior could be proof of either scenario. Oh, this one episode is actually running pretty long. Not pretty long, eight minutes longer than usual. Whether it be Oshiro-sama's curse being real or everything being part of a conspiracy committed by all of the villagers, Rina was involved. Rina had to know something. Rina was suspicious. What exactly was Rina? I couldn't help but think, but think she was somehow involved with a prior string of mysterious deaths. It seemed to recall Ushiro-san had admitted that he had dug into Rina's past a little. He was probably downplaying it when he said a little. 
meaning he had actually dug up pretty deep most likely. I wanted to hear about Rena. I wanted to know what happened to her previous school, among other things that were still unknown to me. If Rena was somebody I should suspect, no, not that. I wanted to know the truth. Tonight I was alone in this huge house. Even though I said I couldn't count on them, I had lost the security I felt. I had I had just by, by my parents being around. It wasn't like this house was some sort of fortress or castle. If a malicious person decided to use brute force, they'd easily gain entry. There were no other residents close to the Maribora residence. No one would be able to hear anything no matter how loud it was. I had never felt so much resentment towards my father's artistic temperament, the fact that he had his house built in such a remote location as it did right now. I wondered if I would still be here by tomorrow morning. Ding and dong, so I had to ask, right now, because I had no idea when the next chance would come. Run away. I'm sure someone, I have something I wanted to ask you about. Please don't keep anything from me. Sure, ask away. Why is the door broken? Even though he was so far away from the other end of the line, this was the most viable he had ever felt. I wanted to ask about Rena, about what happened at her previous school. Actually, regarding Rena's... I noticed a sound that had been going on for a while now. Since I was so focused on the call, I hadn't paid attention to it first, but I finally realized it was the doorbell. The time was 7 o'clock. It was past the time the postman would be making a delivery. Except this is Amazon we're talking about! Same day delivery! Nothing stops them. Except, they stopped shipping at 10, I think, right? 10 or 9. This will be time for a neighbor to be visiting. I guess they were just acting like nobody was home, but that wouldn't be good. That would ruin the all work I had been making and look like my parents were home. I need to answer the door. Hello, Marlboro son? Ah, sorry, someone seems to be at the door. I'm gonna go see who it is. Ah, I guess? I see, my apologies. Should we end the phone call now? That would be a problem. Uh, no, I'll be back in a second. Uh, do you mind if I just leave the phone on? It's fine, I don't mind. I dropped the, ha the handset on my bed and dashed down the door. I needed to make up a good excuse to get them to leave. My parents are really going at it right now. Can you please come back in a week? Oh, that I didn't know that's what that button did. Interesting. Before she was someone did, I had a hunch it was the lady who called uh, right before who was someone did. In which case, I would be one of the neighbors who's friends with my mom. I'll just say mom isn't feeling well and went to bed early. That would be the easiest option. My parents are dead. Please go away. It'd be hard for her to ask me to wake up my mom if she's not feeling well. Bill continued to ring at a regular interval. If someone didn't answer after a ring the bell so much, you'd normally give up and go home, would you? That's a tip off. Without removing the chain, I opened the door slightly and peered out the visit at the visitor. A chill ran down my spine. I knew it. Somewhere deep inside, I had prepared for this very moment. I tried to escape by imagining it with the easiest person to deal with, one of my mom's friends. Oh, she... Good evening. Rena? There shouldn't be any reason for Rena to come over at this hour. Timing also made me feel uneasy, because it was just as I was about to ask Rishi Osama about Rena. I wish I could have chalked this up to mere coincidence, but those unsettling words from Miron several days ago echoed back to me. There's nothing this old man doesn't know. Yeah, I kind of want to make a game like this, in all honesty. Because, like, you make maybe, like, four to five spreadsheet drawings per character, and usually you just have to change the face. Um, then you just write a story, and it's interactive in a way. I think that's kind of cool. I like it. It'd be fun to make one one day. So I, I definitely want to do one like the, this style, but, like, in this kind of, like, murderous, figure out what's going on, psychological. Man, I love these. I love this series. <laughs> Are you alone, Rena? Yeah, it seems that Myun wasn't with her, but that didn't change the situation at all. Why did you come here? Hey, Keichan, I'd like to open the door so we can talk. Can I come inside, I wonder, I wonder? It was true that speaking through a chain door wasn't the right way to talk to a classmate, nor a lady. Uh, my house chain has to be on at night. Don't worry about it. Then it can't be helped, I guess. Rina pouted rather sadly, but she kept smiling at least, and her effort to keep the smile up was quite pitiful. 
Even though she was tugging at my heartstrings, I didn't lower my guard. As long as I stayed like this, even if it made my heart ache, my life wasn't in danger. My life was in danger. What I really feared more than the possibility that hoodlums would assault me if I removed the chain. I was trusting Rena enough to remove the chain and having my friendship betrayed. As long as the chain wasn't unlashed, even if it, it made my heart ache, I wouldn't have to deal with being betrayed by Rena. But here's the thing, right? If you open it up, and she tries anything, you know it. But if you keep her out at the distance, it, it keeps you uncertain. It's gonna keep driving you insane. You have to know, buddy. Like, it's like asking a girl out, right? You gotta have confidence and just cut to the point. Hey, are you trying to murder me? Let's get this over with, alright? Since it kind of like open the door, like... So you open the door, you said that, they're either going to attack you instantly, because you know already, they might as well attack you at that point, because there's no point in trying to hide for a point where you're not prepared, because at this point they are fully aware that you are conscious of their actions. Or just move. <laughs> Since it didn't seem like I'd removed the chain from her silent urging, she appeared to give up to try to get into the entryway. Um, have you eaten yet, Kishan kun No, I haven't eaten. Since my mom wasn't there, didn't want to be ready no matter how long I waited. I laid down when I got home, was woken up by the phone, and didn't quite have a chance to eat since I used up all the time talking. I was going to have a cup... cup noodles in any case. I just eat one whenever I wanted to. Also, I'm learning to cook right now, now that I'm on my own. I made a hamburger today. I completely forgot that my mom told me that those things shrink. I bought like a pack of like 10 for like 12 bucks, still a good deal. But like they shrink to like half the size. I was like, well, darn. It tastes exactly like a McDonald's burger. So. No, not yet. What about it? Excellent. I've brought you a cyanide pill. <laughs> then good. Look here. I brought a bunch of dishes. We now held out a stack of boxes wrapped in cloth. If I could use your kitchen, I could heat up the uh, misc soup and other stuff. It's fine, you don't need to do that. Uh, but there's a lot of tofu and vegetables in it. Does Kishon not like that type of stuff? I wonder, I wonder. There's no way I wouldn't like that. Uh, I love misu soup with lots of ingredients. White radish, carrots, burdock, root, and potatoes, dense and fibrous root vegetables. Yeah, that misc soup looks incredible. I also brought rice, so if you microwave it, you can eat it really quickly. Without a doubt, rice needs misc soup. Stuffing rice down your billet, sipping misc soup in between ravenous bites. Oh yeah, how wonderful is it to be born Japanese? Also, I made some uh, prior pickles. I made sensei pickles this time. Oh, sansei pickles. Before I had moved here to Hiroshima, I scuffed at the mountain vegetables called sansei. But I was captive by their charm the first time I tried them. Such deep, light flavor. Mmm. Pristine. The vegetables from the supermarket were tasteless and bland compared to these. If you had to describe them, they were the vegetables for the uninitiated. To become an expert such as myself, first had to partake of sansei. It was common knowledge around here that the Ryugi family traditional pickles were wonderfully delicious. Ah, no matter what kind of pickles they were, they'd go so well with that fluffy white rice. Also, and also, but wait, there's more! <laughs> so delicious, it just seems so delicious. Farewell to my unhealthy self who said he'd make do with a cup of noodles. Rena appeared to be in good spirits and she was offering such delicious sounding dinner. The stress evaporated from my gut and hunger reared its boringest head. Voracious head. At the same time, awareness of Rena suddenly dwindled. Rena did, did say she was alone. It shouldn't be a problem letting her inside. Though the possibility that it was laced with poison still hadn't been ruled out. At that moment, a cold chill ran down my spine once again. I couldn't understand why such sensations had occupied occurred just then. But the voice inside me was sounding the alarm. Wee woo wee woo. This happy arena speaking of this charming de dinner was dependent on one premise. That premise was that tonight dinner hadn't been made at my house, meaning it was under the assumption that my mom who should be making it, wasn't here. At any normal household, 7 o'clock would be around the middle of dinner time. Well, 5, I think, for other people, but okay, 7 is the maverick. If my mom, well, maybe 7 is average, and my family just eats really early. If 
my mom were here, we'd be eating dinner around the time as well. The fact that she brought over all the makings of a meal at this time was inherently strange. Unless she knew. Rina. Did she? Did she know that my parents were home? Dress, how'd she get past my clever ruse? I closed the garage. I did the laundry. I did the dishes. I had an affair with the neighbor. I did everything my mother did. There was also the chance that this was a bluff. I turned on the lights and a bunch of other stuff to make it seem like my parents were here. There was a chance that Rena was unsure if my parents were home. But I had to wonder. The laundry, the garage, the, the evening paper. There was plenty of signs of them being hastily tidied up. It was hard to say that Rena didn't have a chance to deter if my parents were here or not. Ugh. Water. Ugh. <laughs> Rena didn't have a chance to deter if my parents were here or not. But there was no reason for me to confess that right now. I should try holding on to the fact as long as I could. First of all, the chain was still latched. As long as I didn't take it off, Rena wouldn't be able to do anything to me. I'm quite grateful, but dinner will be ready pretty soon. Huh? Is that so? Is that so? I know you went through all the effort and everything, but well, unable to think of a good way to refuse my words trailed off weakly. But some of this could work as side dishes, I think, I think. I'm sorry, we have more than enough already. My mom always makes quite a few sides, so... Uh, you have side dishes? What about male dishes? Front dishes? I dodged her question apologetically. Duh. She's good. She's good with the manipulation. I shall not be persuaded, temptress. This door shall remain closed. But, but the feeling I tried to ignore began creeping up at my back end. I spoke as if my mom was setting down dinner right now, but it didn't mesh well with what Rena was saying. Rena was taking it as me aware of some obvious fact, and that I was aware of it as well. So Kichon can cook. What did you make, I wonder? I don't know, well, it's not that. I Rina had assumed out of nowhere that I had made the dishes. No, not so much that. I'd made them, but rather that my mom hadn't. Oh, she's good. This is like Sherlock Holmes versus, uh, Mordeen. What's his, what's his brother's name? M guy or whatever. No, Sherlock Holmes right now, okay. Did you really make them? The side dishes. Did you, Kichun kun It wasn't me who made them. My mom did. No, she's making them right now. So you see, I'm sorry, but I can't eat what you brought. Rina fell silent at that moment. At that moment, I felt the light suddenly disappeared from her eyes. How about I try guessing what Kichan Kun's dinner will be? It doesn't matter what I'm going to eat. Let's see. The conversation might appear natural at first glance, but Rina was firmly in control. I felt like I was being interrogated. Your dinner, I wonder, is it something that can be made with just hot water? Hey, now stop with that insults. I can't believe you'd be belittling my mom's extravagant dinner like that. Tickets sold out, full capacity already, it's that amazing. I tried my best to put on a strong front, but I couldn't grit my teeth quite right. So I said I looked like someone who was borderline hysterical. But Rina showed up no reaction whatsoever, even to the silence. Kichan Kun, did your mother really leave you dinner? No, you see, she didn't leave me dinner. She's making it right now. It's almost time for dinner. Rina had taken that assertion of mine that my mother had was home and making dinner right now, and was completely ignoring it. I could tell that more I panicked, the, col uh, the colored Rina became. Hey, Kichan Kun, at that moment, an uncontrollable chill crept in and in the gap in the doorway. Is your mom home, I wonder, I wonder? I couldn't keep up the charade anymore. Rena, she knew full well that my parents uh, weren't home. But I had come too far to admit that now. Anyway, my parents were here, and we'd be having dinner soon. That was the situation I had connected, so I answered. I told her she was here. She's here, of course. I could feel the humidity drying out from the surrounding air. Rena's eyes were becoming even more frigid, piercing me with with their glared glare. Up. Oh, why? Uh oh, 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 what do you mean? I just, I, what do you mean? What? I, was... I tried acting casual. <clears throat> what do you mean? <laughs> I tried acting casual, but the, the facade was torn off me the instantly I looked into Rena's eyes. That look, it informed it. It informed me of Rena's response after 
faster than she could open her mouth. Why have you been lying to me, I wonder, I wonder. I- I'm not lying. They are true lies. That's a lie, isn't it? It's not a lie. You gotta fight for- LIES! Rena outburst sent a jolt surging through my body. Rena and I were still separated by what a few inches that slightly ajar, but still chained Dora could afford. But despite that, I was still being cornered. My house, which I consider considered a safe haven, until now had become a more likely a dark alleyway, but no one could save me. Shall I guess your dinner, Kichon? Let's see. I knew now that Rena had already known that my parents would be not be here tonight. But this... But it was still so strange that it had come to this. Even if she'd, even if she somehow knew that my parents weren't home, there was no way she, she should be able to guess what I'd be eating tonight. But Rena said she'd guess. How could she guess it? How could she know it was instant? Cup noodles. That's right, isn't it? But what flavor? All right, that I was going to eat. Wait, the cooking. Ripperture of a man who can't do housework is probably nothing but a cup of noodles after all. Looking at this, statistically, it was the most probable answer, and it's actually quite popular, even here. So that didn't mean she was guessing. I don't think you'll be full with just noodles. I think you're having rice and stuff will definitely hit the spot. Calm down, Kichan Marabar. Keep your cool. You are a tidal wave against her shore. You will whittle her down. This was just coincidence. Rena was just re-, re reading certain tales of mine. The fact that she was inferring what I was thinking alarmed me. But it wasn't as if, uh, if she was exactly regarding my mind. If it was being read, then she was a demon. Not a demon. Things like that. They couldn't possibly exist. Do you, you like them? Do you mean noodles? No. <laughs> Rena indicated that the point of my answer was addressing... No. Blank, 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 blank. Why is that blank? Because Rina indicated that the point of my answer was addressing... The point of my answer was addressing... Was wrong. I think that's a typo. It was wrong. The rebuttal was so short that I momentarily didn't understand which Rina had spoken. Oh, he didn't understand what she said. Okay. Sorry, Rina. What did you just say now? Huh? About what? Just now, you asked me if there was something that I liked, didn't you? It wasn't long before I regret how carelessness I pushed forward with that question. It was such a simple answer that had that was why I wasn't able to comprehend it. Pork bone and ginger flavor. Oh, she's got us red-handed. Yep, we're, we're boned. I wondered how I appeared that moment in my mind went completely blank until the moment I was able to recover. As my field of view began to distort, slowly swirling in the ca contour clockwise direction, I lost all sense of balance. Why do you know that? I didn't even deny it. That was the type of frenzied state I was in. How could Rina know even this? Not even caring as much as I mashed my head against the door, I fixed my gaze on Rina. But di she didn't even flinch when she saw me do that. I certainly did buy them. I bought a bunch at once. I bought a whole case. Stop saying everything. How could you know that? Why, I wonder. Uh, quite strange, isn't it? Isn't it? Oh, isn't there like a... Hold on. I can use these. There we go. I have a key here that sounds like... I'm trying to get, like, a good portfolio so I can keep, like, making thumbnails for the episodes, because I upload these on YouTube. Strange, isn't it? Isn't it? How could you dodge the question at a time like this? The chain and the door suddenly were no longer protecting me. How do you know? Why do you know? Answer me! You bought them at 7th Mart, didn't you? You used a coupon. You, you put your left shoe on first, and your favorite type of hentai is tentacle. <sighs> a shiver ran up my spine. I tried covering it up with an angry facade. Like I said, why do you know that? I was behind you, following you the whole time. But what are you saying? I can understand why she was saying she'd been following me at that time. That's because... Re oh, that's because Rena was right behind Kichokun's back the whole time. Oh, she... 
like that night. That night I was absorbed in my phone conversation with Ushin. I didn't even sense her being there. Standing behind the door behind me, standing there just like that. When Kichan was picked, was picking out noodles, I was watching the entire time. I was the noodles. Uh, you picked up, picked out so many different flavors, didn't you? And your mom got angry. If you were going to pick the expression, expensive ones, then you should just pick one type, she said. And Kichan picked out the big box of pork, bone, and ginger flavor that he loved so much, didn't he? Can I have a taste of the pork bone? Wink, wink. I like it too. Pork bone noodles. But I can never eat a whole big bowl myself. My brain was paralyzed, dulling sense. It might have been a def mecha defense mechanism to diminish the fear I was feeling to a non-traumatizing levels. With the fear being diminished, the fog enveloped my mind was, cl was cleared away. Then I could understand why Rina was saying and started to put meaning behind her words. Even so, my fear hadn't subsided completely. It was like I was standing at the edge of a cliff, cliff eyes, cliff eyes closed, so I didn't have to look down. I didn't actually solve any of the basic problems. So I slowly took a step backwards, and as I withdrew, Rina advanced. So, Kichan kun can you open this? We can eat dinner together. I'm sure it's going to be delicious, okay? Rita's pale slender fingers squirmed through. Uh, that's just like how the hentai start! No! <laughs> if they had a mind of their own rattling the chain. Ah, uh, do not put your fingers in between the door. And she unlatched the chain from the door. A feeling of terror would have exploded within me. But Rina didn't do that. She was simply ignoring me, imploring me to remove the chain. She was doing her hardest to light the fuse to the powder keg of my heart. Trying again and again, clatter, clatter, but it doesn't light. It doesn't light. No, if I am a powdered keg, I am a wet powdered keg. I am wet. Sopping wet. Open up, Kichankun. Please go away. I beg you, please go away. How can you say something so mean? I wonder, I wonder. Please go away, go away, go away! The powdered keg inside me finally went off with a boom! No, no, smoking. It just exploded. I tackled the door. The force through the door had knocked Rena momentarily off balance. I couldn't hesitate here. Amazon boxes, give me leverage! I grabbed onto the doorknob with the hands. I planted my feet firmly and pulled with all my might. But that slamming sound I so desired didn't happen. I couldn't feel a tiny disturbing bit of resistance, keeping the door from closing. And the source of that was Rena's fingers. Each of those fingers wriggling, squirming around like a tentacles of carnivorous plant through the crack in the doorway. It hurts, it hurts, it hurts, Kichan, it hurts. Uh, it wasn't a harsh shriek, but more of a yelp. She was trying to keep back. Go away, go away, go away. I kept on pulling on the door with all my might. Stop. Oh, uh, stop. I didn't even realize that it didn't loosen my pull on the door. At least Motel Arena wouldn't be able to pull her fingers out. And that was why the door wasn't closing. It really hurts, Kichan Kun. I'm sorry, it was messing around too much. Uh, it didn't. I, I didn't care one a bit for her apology. No matter how much she apologized, it didn't change any of what she had done up until now. It didn't change anything. It hurts. It hurts. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry. Go away. Go away. Go away. Well, she can't. Her hand, her fingers, her tendril fingers are stuck in your door, which you have beaten with a baseball bat, which I guess we're going to ignore the fact you did about 200 to 300 dollars of damage to your house. I'd appreciate... I, I just trapped her fingers. Uh, Irina's white fingers had become deep red and were no longer even squirming. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go away, go away, go away. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Rina apologies were occasionally twisted with pain. Just like broken records, she intended to repeat it over and over. Go away, go away, go away, go away. Stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. I pulled in the door even harder. Uh, finally, Rina's fingers were somehow able to slip out from their imprisonment in the doorway. The moment that happened, the door closed silently, and I could hear the thud of Rina falling on her butt on the outside. I locked the door immediately. I made a loud clunk, voicing my rejection to Rina. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Kichun Kun, I'm sorry. Open up, Kichun Kun. Rina leaned against the door, apologizing profusely, and nothing else. After confirming that was, I was officially sealed off from her. I trudged away from the entry. 
On the other side, I could still hear Rina echoing her replies. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Those pitiful words, they would be forever seeking my forgiveness. I didn't feel bad about this at all. But that wasn't out of any sort of malice. I just felt a sort of hazy sense of relief that was able to escape from Rita before Mian had threatened me with the door, doorway saying there was nothing she didn't know. And just now at the same place, Rita told me the same thing. My feeble attempts to disguise the fact my parents weren't home had served no purpose from the start. I should have just pretended to be out to be to be out and not even open the door. My mess my meager plans hadn't helped at all. And here was Zima, it was impossible to outwit them. Even though I was on the other side of the door, I wanted to get as far away from Rina as possible. One step, two step, with each one, her sniveling apologies became more dis distant. I sprinted up the stairs and dove into my room. As you would expect, I was finally no longer able to hear Rina repeating her endless apology. Diving into my bed, I was startled by the hard lump I felt. There was something in my bed. It was the receiver. I finally remembered. I was in the middle of a call with Oshiro-san. Looking at the clock, apparently much time had passed since I was downstairs. Could it be my clock had run out of batteries? I had talked with Rina for so long. How did, how did almost no time pass? But the hand on the clock was ticking forward one second every second as usual. As I put the still warm receiver to my ear, time which felt frozen began moving once again. Hello, Oshiro-san? Try to keep you waiting. No, not at all. I didn't wait that long. It, it was... It became apparent that my, the amount of time that had passed between myself and Oshiro was different. Over the phone, I could hear the energetic voice from a sports program on or something. It drove home just how far away Oshiro-san really was. Mina came just now. Did she come to play? I wasn't con confident that I could currently explain the situation to Oshiro. Just talk to the man. <laughs> oh gosh, I freaking hate that scene in the show. Oh, I hate the fingers and the... Oh, it's... That is, let's see, that is my, my break? second most unsettled scene in this show where I'm like, oh no, ah, uh, like imagine getting your hand full forced by a guy between a door, oh gosh, don't imagine that, it's horrible, and oh wow, I just realized one of my fingers hurts, let me just do a quick finger crack, there we go, man, this is a long episode. But I didn't need to right now. Right now, I needed to know about Rina. That's right, I was planning to ask Oshiro Sama more about Rina, but Rina's little visit had interrupted the conversation. What was true, what was false, I couldn't tell. The one thing I knew was the single grim reality that Rina was suspicious. I might be able to figure I might be able to I might be able to figure something out if I asked Oshiro Sama about her. Up until now, I had re regretted it when it Whenever I forced myself to ask about things that I was better off not knowing, but looking at it that way, you could say I'd hit rock bottom. There was no possible way I could feel any more regret than I did now. No, no, rather I wanted to know if there was anything beyond this I would regret more. Forget about tomorrow, it wasn't out of the realm of possibility for something to happen tonight. I want to know everything I could. I was absolutely not going to die like this. Not without knowing anything, definitely I won't. Regarding Rina Ragusan, I did a bit of digging. Yeah, well, it wasn't much. I understood that Ushasan was talking in circles. A bit meant I dug so deep I'd, it'd be hard to discuss with you since you're her friend. I want to know everything from your research. I don't think you'll be very interested in what I have to say, though. Ushasan, I spoke as calmly as possible to Ushasan, who was continuing to avoid the issue. Then I said it. I think Rinagi is suspicious. Even in, if past incidents were from Oshiro-sama's curse, Rinagi is involved. Do you have some sort of proof that makes you believe Rinagi is suspicious? The manner in which Oshiro-sama spoke became very firm. Do you have any some sort of proof? Well, technically, proof no, but you are a testimonial, which is pretty good. Do you have some sort of proof that would that was talking to him as a detective? I only have circumstantial evidence. I see. I could tell every, even the other phone how disappointed Oshiro-sama was. Pulling on the fishing line when he felt a bite only to reel in the bait, disappointed but ready to cast the line once more. That's how it seemed. Oshiro-san, you can't do anything without physical proof, can you? What I meant was you can't come and save me without proof. I stuck that barb in there. As Oshiro-san loved roundabout ways of saying things, he understood me just fine. It's fine, Rupasan. 
I'll protect you. That was not the least a bit reassuring. Wishon was just using me to continue his investigation. I was just going to get killed and my corpse would be an important piece of evidence. That was all I was to him. Whether I'm alive or dead may be, uh, be of no con concern to your investigation, but it's all over for me when I die. Wishon so went silent on the other end of the phone. That may have been too blunt, but I didn't care. All I needed to rely to... To relay to Oishi-san was that I was currently in a very dangerous situation. So please tell me. Tell me about Rina. Satoshi transferred out. Not too far in the future. I'll probably also do whatever Rina called transferring out as well. But you won't be able to find my corpse. You haven't even been able to find Satoshi's body yet. Alright mirabu san please calm down. I was already suppressing my aggra aggravating even without Oishi-san having to tell me. It wouldn't solve anything if I could continue to scream about my mistrust in the police. It would seem that I could only depend on myself in the bat Satoshi left behind to protect myself. Then I at least wanted to know about what happened before Rina transferred schools. You know this won't be very interesting, right? Oshisan, realizing my resolve, couldn't be swayed, finally caved. Right now, there's nothing that I'll find uninteresting, please. There are a few things I need you to agree to. Okay. Please keep this confidential. Also, part of this may be speculation. Not all of this may be true. Are you still interested? It might not be true? I don't understand. What do you mean? There isn't one main investigation for the mysterious chains of deaths in Hirozama. Each one is treated as its own individual case. Thus, Rina Waiki has never been linked to any of the investigations. Basically, you see, this is an investigation of Rina done by the police. And in a personal inquiry is what you're telling me. This will make things a lot quicker since you understand. All of all of it is from either phone calls or meetings and interviews, so they aren't cooperated. I'm asking you to take this with with a grain of salt is what I mean. Do we have an agreement? All of it is just from what you've heard. Yes, my apologies, it's all my personal investigation, you see. The thing is, before you said you saw Rena's chart, didn't you? I'm sure I heard you say that. Sun paused for a moment and on the other end of the line. I told you that too. <laughs> Please pretend you didn't hear anything about that. That's highly illegal of what I told you. And in fact, I must get rid of you. I didn't care about Ushiro-sama having certain obligations and responsibilities. I also didn't care if there was no proof. Even if uh, they were just rumors, there's no smoke without fire after all. Please tell me, Ushiro-san. Understood. Ushiro-san finally opened those tight lips of his. It seems Irina lived in Hirozama a long time ago. She had moved to Ibakurai Prefecture after she finished elementary school. Then following that, right after transferring, the unfortunate incident with the breaking of the school windows, hap windows happened. Then Rina confined to the doctor, it was Oshirasama. This was all that he knew. There isn't much difference between what I know and what you know, Meripura-san. Then what part did you investigate further? It didn't need- I didn't need to ask. It was the incident that happened just after the transfer. The incident Rina was responsible for and what she divulged to the doctor afterwards, correct? Uh, yes. After you learned about that, you started suspecting Rina and the others, didn't you? Yes, I did suspect them. So, they're the ones after all. Oh, no, that's not what I meant by suspect them. Hmm? Or she- Oshisan was the type of person to say things with confidence, but these particular words were less than reassuring. Oh, my voice is starting to hurt. Uh, how long is this episode going? It's almost three hours. Then who did you suspect? That it was... Oshiro-sama. Huh? That Oshiro-sama's curse really exists. Yeah, right, well... <laughs> Oshiro-sama laugh was quite dry. Oh, Ushisama, certainly not the kind that would make you want to join in. Uishi-san re resumed the con conversation about the dubious circumstances behind Satoshi's disappearance, the course of events up until the start of del delving into Rina's past. Just then, there was a thunder in the distance and a heavy rain started to pour down. It came without warning and rained so heavy it felt like it could beat you down. I had felt the window in my room open a crack to let the heat out. The violent wind danced into my room, making the curtains flap rapidly. What is it? Oh, nothing. It suddenly started raining heavily. Sorry, please continue. 
I got up while still on the phone and closed the window. I said at the beginning it was an incident, but because neither the school nor the victims filled charges, the police were never involved. So you see, those involved were very reluctant to talk. Regardless of their being a victim who had one eye beaten so badly that it had permanent damage. It could have been the school or possibly some individual who made arrangements to keep this from going public. Also, the psychologist was very strict about their professional ethics. Hello? Maburo-san? Can you hear me? There was a figure of a person standing by the light near the mailbox this whole time. Even in this torrential rain, they didn't have an umbrella. They were unquestionably drenched from head to toe. In this shower, which more resembled a waterfall, droplets of water dripped down from her hair. Just standing there, both arms dangling at her side. In one hand was the stack of boxes wrapped in cloth. Her eyes focused on my room. Focused on me as I was about to, to close the window. Her mouth was methodically repeating a chewing motion. As if it was something hard to chew in her mouth, with, a, with her cheeks puffing out. What could she be eating over there? How could it be that this time I was more enthralled by Rina instead of shocked from brought by Urshama? If it wasn't starting raining, I wouldn't have gone to the window. Then I wouldn't have noticed Rina, and nor would I have noticed that. Rina's mouth was moving in the same pattern. She wasn't eating something, she was repeating something. What was it? Was she repeating? To me? What was she saying? And why was I right up against the window, fixated on her? Hello? Mayor Biro-san? Can you hear me? Hello? I'm, I'm sorry. Huh, Mayor Biro san I'm sorry. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hello? Mayor Biro san What's the matter? Even in this torrential downpour, Rena was still apologizing. The other self inside of me drew the curtains hastily with my right hand, blocking my view of the outside. But even doing that, Rina's relentless apologies still reached my ears. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. If I forgive you for this, will you forgive me for that? Please stop, please stop, please stop, please stop, please stop, please stop. I'm sorry, 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 I'm sorry. Darn it! Why did I- why did I- why did I have to forgive her? I'm the one who wants to be forgiven. What part of me can't you forgive? I won't be killed. If you won't forgive me, then I won't forgive you either. I won't forgive. I won't forgive. 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 I won't forgive. Mirabura san, if you can hear me, then please respond. Hello? 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 I've got to out forgive him. Is it over? Ooh. Ooh, gosh, that. This episode destroyed my voice. We have received new tubes. Split personality at the seventh mark. Uh, it's not even over. We still have two whole things to read. Oh boy. I see it in movies quite often, but what is it exactly? Multiple personalities are thought to be es escapism. Multiple personality disorder is a form of escape? Correct. The exact mechanism is not fully understood, but it's believed to be a type of defense for the brain to retain mental stability. Hypothetically, poor people imagining themselves as wealthy is a form of escapism, is it not? Is this also a form of multiple personality disorder? I wouldn't go that far, but broadly speaking, one could infer that. It's something that occurs in us all. Does the split personality occur when one cannot tell which is reality and which is the escape? Escape? Uh, that's difficult to say. There's... There are some who agree with that, and some who disagree. Uh, there is n no consensus. Then is the occurrence of multiple personalities still an unknown phenomenon, something not fully comprehended in, in the psychiatric field? Unfortunately, that is the current state of things. We can only put our hope in future research. But, but sort of cool having a split personality? What kind of people get split personalities? Recent studies find that those who develop it, or rather those who are more susceptible to developing it, may be genetically pre predisposed or may have had abnormal mental development. Some say that childhood abuse increases the chances. Speaking of which, a person A here experiences abuse as a child, didn't he? How sad. 
Person A has seven different personalities. Let's watch a video of him. Right after these commercials! Interesting, okay, the seventh market. Seventh Market. Oh, there we go. We're back to the happy music, dude. Seventh Market was a bargain supermarket with food and alcohol. What's this, Keychain King? So many? There's no reason to get all the different kinds, is there? I flopped all the different colored cup bottles, cup noodle bowls into the cart. Uh, cup noodles have gotten so elaborate recently, and there are a bunch of different types. I want to try each of them at least once. I knew it was pretty selfish of me, but I thought I'd at least give it a try. Keychain. Kichi, buy them in this big case. It's cheaper. Dad faltered. Well, I had a feeling it'd end up like this. Dad knew there was no point in him butting in. Then I'd only get to eat one kind. I'd get bored with it. It was resonating as a formality. I had already given up on the inside and wasn't sure which case of noodles to get. If you can't pick, then Mommy will pick for you. You don't have to rush me. I quickly searched the cases of noodles for what I want. Pork bone and ginger. Large cup? Hey, Kichan, can't we? Can't you get a more normal one? If I let mom pick, she'd err on the side of safety and get soy sauce of salty flavored. Pork bone is good. I don't want a big bowl of tasteless stuff. I remember insisting that the noodles I picked were the right kind. In this frozen memory, in the time this has escalated world, I didn't have the power to look around my surroundings. So I did what I could and reached out with my hearing and vision and sharpening my senses to find the presence I overlooked. No matter how much I searched, through my field of vision, I couldn't see Rena. I rewound the situation searching, but of course I couldn't find her. So all these tips inside his head, then was she spying at me from my blind spot? I got through, through sound, the sound and presence again looking. I couldn't sense the other the other customers. They were all mixed about, moving as they pleased. There was nobody looking over over this was and no one trying to get behind me. Not here. Couldn't be here. Probably wasn't here. I would I would definitely notice if someone was right behind me, even when I wasn't on my guard. I smiled wryly as at the thought of using a vague word like probably right before contradicting it with definitely. Then I paused, my mental replay as a chill ran down my spine. There was definitely a presence like a shadow behind me. That was a terror unlike any other. If a presence really had manifested behind me, I would have definitely have turned around to check for it. But the world had moved on and there was no way for me to turn around. While carrying that frightening shadow on my back, I was gleefully running around the store searching for a case of noodles, running through the instant noodle section, bad-mouthing my mom. But there was that present constantly at my back, sticking to me like a shadow. No way to see what if realizing it now after the fact was horrifying and repulsive. In that moment of time, I was running around gleefully, carrying the cardboard box. Tip, tap, but listening to that moment again, I could hear the footsteps other than mine going pit-pat with every step. Tip, tap, tip, tap, tip, tap, tip, tap, tip, tap, tip, tap, pit, pat, pit, pat, pit, pat, pit, pat, tip, tap, tip, tap, tip, tap, tip, tap, Okay, it's kind of keep going. Okay, while I was running, the sound of those bare, those bare footsteps going pit pat were right behind me. Footsteps. Me running around gleefully in that cl uh, cl closest closed off moment in time, but I didn't hear it. No, I heard it. That's why I remembered it. I didn't think I had heard anything. That's why I didn't turn around. This is why I didn't turn around. In that moment, the pit pat of those footsteps were following me. The entire time. I couldn't run faster and escape. I couldn't run any faster. And I I had ran at the same that time. I couldn't turn around. I hadn't turned around before, not once. Then I returned to my parents and I started talking. The shadow like presence was was right at my back. Since I didn't move at the shadows, didn't move. That is why it made no sound. That was all. At that time, I hadn't taken a single step while wa talking with my parents. I was just standing there. This was undeniable. And yet, I heard it. A pit hat. That shouldn't be. 
If I took three steps, it followed three steps. Wasn't that the rule? There was no sound other than that. At that time, the entire world had gone dark, a sudden darkness. It was the end of my reflective journey. I was tired. I wanted to end it. Someone turned on the light, except my body couldn't move. As if I, w I was sewn into it that moment in time. Pit at my past self's hair stood on end. That's impossible. How that's just breaking the rules. I haven't moved, so you shouldn't be moving either. I couldn't move, so you shouldn't be able to move either. Follow the rules. Pit pat. Yes, that sounded echoed in the darkness once again. The hair on the back of my neck pricked up on the end. It was so close that it was it was hard to tell whether it was touching the hair or not. Why couldn't I move like how the presence was moving behind me? I quickly realized I could move. It's just that I was scared and didn't want to. But now was the only time I could turn around. It was something unforgivable in, in this moment in time. But I needed to turn around immediately. As if my entire being was trying to force me to stop, it began to administer a pain like a needle being stuck into my very pore. I'll turn around. I'll turn around. I'm not scared at all. I'll turn around. I'll turn around. I'm not scared at all. A scream I was unable to vocalize. I turned around. At first, I couldn't understand the meaning of it. What? What is this? The situation in front of my eyes. It was like a mouth biting an apple and slurping the juice the way you would do with an apple. My mind was being eaten. It began to munch down, slurping the juices because it was like an apple, meaning what was in front of me was... Oh, wait. Is this... What was that? What what was that? Okay. So I believe there was one more chapter. And I have to decide if I'm going to go for it. You know, as much as I really want to finish this right now, at least this chapter, because there's, there's more there's more episodes after this about this game, but um ah, my voice is giving out. Like it's really starting to hurt. So I'm gonna have to unfortunately I really want to, but I don't think I can do it. So next episode is probably gonna be a short one. Um I'll probably do it after my collab with Ophelia Spectre. And I might be doing also a collab with Battleship Colorado. Uh same day, but I don't know if I rec record the Battleship one because we're doing a Space Engineers battle and he's going to be recording it or he's going to be streaming it. And unfortunately, Space Engineers does not like me streaming with my VTuber. So I'll try to stream it, but not without my VTuber, just because I need the system power to give me that strategic advantage. But anyways, thank you everyone who stopped by. I hope you guys are enjoying this story. I look so forward to the last chapter of this episode and I look forward to the next two episodes that are out. As I said, this is a long, long game. Oh, I am loving it. I am loving it. It's just, ooh, it's good. But anyways, thank you everyone who stuck around to this. Uh, thank you, Epic. Thank you, One of Sleep. I believe you're here. And thank you, Tucson. Tucson. Yeah, One of Sleep and Tucson for here being here. I hope you guys enjoyed. Have a good rest of your days. I'll see you the next time I stream, which will be Tuesday.